I'm scooting. I'm scooting. Oh shit, I'm crashing. I'm burning. Oh no. Hi, my love. How are you? How's it going? Um, it is, it's not super late. I filmed much later than it is right now, but it certainly is a time when a normal human being would be probably getting ready for bed. Um, I, I, that's, couldn't, couldn't be me, babe. Um, and I needed caffeine. I was feeling, I made a tea earlier in the evening and I was like, this is good. This is going to last me until, you know, I have to get ready to film until, you know, after my daughter's in bed and after I finish some, some private reading stuff and catch up on some emails slowly, but surely. <laughs> um, and it just around nine o'clock, it just, it hit me. I was like, Oh, good, good golly. I hope that second win comes in quick. Uh, and it wasn't, I was, and I got like this close to, uh, to just being like, no, 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 no. I can just, I can just go to sleep. That's okay. But I don't want to because we are so close. We are so close to getting back on track with, um, you know, the, the schedule Wednesdays and Sundays. And it was easy to maintain before, um, because I had had like a, a backlog so the videos, the readings were scheduled and you know, once that, once you have the schedule and the backlog, it's all good, baby. It's all gravy. Um, so trying to get back on track with that and I want to do that. So we're doing that. It's happening. I can fucking suck it up. Um, so I was like, you know what I need? You know what I need? Cause I need this on a regular basis now. Um, and that still feels very weird for me to admit, but it's, we'll get there. It's okay. We'll get there. There's growth. I remember, um, back around the holidays, um, I had posted readings where I was drinking coffee, um, with a lot of sugar in it, but, <laughs> and I was still like dying. I was like, this is terrible. This is awful. Maybe now we're hitting two espresso shots with every, every coffee we get. So <laughs> that's growth. That's character development, um, or desperation. Two things can be true. Um, thank you, my loves. And, uh, so I was like, I need caffeine and, and it'll, and then I'll be fine. Um, so I got, uh, I got coffee, coffee. I got some coffee. Um, and I drank it and now I'm, I'm good. Now we're good. But my, um, on the delivery app, I have like, you know, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Couldn't get by without you. Here's a great tip, but please leave it on the doorstep. And I, that, that's all you got to do, baby. I don't, I don't, I don't need anything else from you. I promise. I promise. I do not. Um, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and I have this little, like, I guess it's technically a plant stand kind of slash like stool slash table thing, um, on my doorstep that doesn't have a plant on it because we had a storm a few months back and it blew into the next fucking planet. Um, but I still, <laughs> I still have the plant stand cause I like plants. So I'm like, I'm going to buy you a plant, babe. And then I never do. Um, <laughs> And the cutest thing I've noticed is that nine times out of 10, um, delivery people will, there's that fucking hair. Okay. One of my hairs is stuck in this deck and I keep shuffling it and feeling it, but then I can't find it. Anyway, um, nine times out of 10, they will place like the, the bags, the takeout bags on this little plant stand. Cause it's like right beside my door and it's always so like, thoughtful and neat and cute and I just think it's so sweet that like out of all the different delivery people um who come to the house they like almost all of them have the same idea where they're like that's that's the perfect place for this and it's so cute um but tonight at the ripe time of nearly 10 o'clock p.m my sweet sweet delivery driver um decided to ignore slash not read slash whatever the fuck my little note of like thank you so much appreciate you please just leave it on the doorstep please do not look at me please do not please do not please do not do not wait for me to come to the door please don't i don't 
Please don't. Please don't see me rise from the bog from which I fucking exist on the daily. Um, <laughs> um, but they, so they did. They knocked and my dogs went crazy. And, <laughs> and I went to the door and they were very sweet. They were very nice. They were like, wow, coffee smells really good. It's pretty late for coffee though. And I was like, baby, that's so true. Thank you so much though. <laughs> <laughs> and it scared the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> just them ring, just them knocking on the door, not not the interaction. Well, also that, but that's just a, that's just a me thing. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, and then I was chatting with a friend for a little bit while I was drinking my coffee and eating. I got a lemon cake. Thing. It was very good. And then I got this new candle from a friend of mine. Brought it back from a trip. She went to Florida and brought me a candle, which is so sweet because literally I love candles. I love fire. I love candles. I love fire and things that smell good. And I don't know if you can see, but it's covered in little lemons. It's covered in little lemons and it smells delicious. It's, it's, I don't remember what the actual scent is, but it smells exactly like a lemon pound cake and it's so cute and I love it. I'm so happy. It's so cute. Oh, I love, I love a good candle jar. Goodness, goodness me. Do I love a good candle jar? My, uh, my office is full of them. I have more jars than any one person could ever possibly need. Um, but I was chatting with a friend of mine and, um, I suppose at some point in my life, I, <laughs> at, in some reading, I think I had mentioned, um, that Hercules, the, uh, Disney movie, uh, was coming up a lot for me. Um, and this wasn't too far back and I guess there was news today, or I don't know if it just came out today, but today my friend told me about it, um, that they're doing, Disney's doing a live action Hercules. And, and as a joke, but also kind of honest, cause there's always a little bit of honesty in every joke. Um, my friend was like, you fucking did this. You did this. Cause you were like, Hercules keeps popping up. And then two months later, Disney announces they're doing a live action Hercules. And I was like, don't you dare put this on me. Do not. Um, I'm, I'm so upset. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so fucking devastated. Mickey Mouse is going to fucking drop in from my ceiling any minute now and fucking hit me with a fucking, uh, knockout gas <laughs> to shut me up but I'm gonna say my piece I'm devastated Hercules is one of my most favorite uh, Disney movies I had two of the collectible McDonald's plates in the 90s not to brag but <laughs> I love that movie I love that movie so much actively it is one of my most favorite Disney movies like it's honestly, it's a top, it's a top three, if not a top two. Um, and I love that movie so much. I love that movie. And I'm so sad. I'm so fucking sad. Okay, listen, Mickey Mouse, if you're out there, if you, if you ruin this movie, I, because I have to see it. I don't, I haven't seen a lot of the live action Disney movies. Um, I did really enjoy, um, Beauty and the Beast. I didn't, because that was like one of the earlier live action ones. Yes, maybe, perhaps. Um, I really enjoyed Beauty and the Beast. That was really fun. It was really beautiful. The music was amazing. Josh Groban, my boy can't do wrong. Forevermore? Pfft. Legend. Um, <laughs> um, that was a beautiful movie. That was really, really, really good. Um, and it, it was, it was good. They did good. They did good. They did really good. Um, I have, uh, let's not talk about Lion King. Um, <laughs> let's just not. Um, 
Jungle Book was was very good as well. It took me a lot. I saw Jungle Book like years after uh, it came out, and I was like, "This is fucking fantastic." John John Favreau. John Favreau. <sighs> a king, a king, a king among among men. Um. <laughs> um but I haven't the Aladdin. I don't. We don't talk about Aladdin. Um. What other live action did I haven't I have not seen a lot of them um, and I have to see this one I have to because it's Hercules um, I haven't seen the new Little Mermaid yet um, my daughter is very 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 excited to see it we're going to see it this weekend that is one of her that's, that's probably her most favorite uh, Disney movie um, so I hope it's good. If it's not, she's a Taurus and she'll tell me about it. Um, <laughs> she'll make sure that I know she didn't have a good time. Um, and she, oh, babe, she should. Um, so I, I'm going to have to see the Hercules live action. And if it's bad, and my expectations, I'm promising you, could not be lower. Um, if it's bad, I'm, I'm going to be devastated. So Mickey Mouse, if you're out there, if you hear this, if you ruin this for me, I will find you. I will find you. I will make you fall in love with me. I will become a permanent part of your mind, heart, and soul. And then I will leave you. I will abandon you. I will vanish into the night like fog. You will never hear from me. You will never see me again. You will try and find me and every person that you love after me, but you will never find me again. I will never allow you to recover. So you better make the movie good. Mickey. Uh. <laughs> um, I'm I'm sad. It's gonna. I don't think it's gonna be good. Oh, I'm I'm upset. Like just just let things be good. Come up with new ideas. Like you have a you have more money then things exist in the world. You can't find one person who has an original idea. Not one person in those fucking expansive fucking conference rooms is like, hey, what if we did this thing that I don't think we've done before? Not one person has that idea. Not one person. That's crazy to me. That's, I'm, I, okay. No, I'm just, I'm not going to go on a filmmaking tangent because I'm upset now. You, now you've upset me, Disney. Um, but yeah, so let's hold hands through it because <laughs> I, just, uh, I have to, see, I was just about to say, I'm like, I have to rewatch Hercules. Now I can't because the whole time I'm going to be like, they're going to ruin this. They're going to destroy this movie. <sighs> I'm so it's a great movie though that is a fantastic movie won't say I'm in love they had no right they had zero right I remember um, I had watched Hercules at a friend's house for a sleepover when we were younger um, and I loved it but it was one of the very few Disney movies that I didn't have um, and then I remember going to a garage sale with my mom and um, what are we doing for selectors? Okay. Um, and they had it. They had the VHS. I think it was 25 cents. <laughs> and I was like, what a deal. <laughs> and I got it. And I got a giant, uh, giant stuffed monkey that my mom hated. She hated stuffed animals. She did not like them at all. She thought they were dusty and gross. And I was like, what if I had 500 of them? And... <laughs> and ornately organized them in a, in a tower that surrounded me every night when I slept. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's the news for today. What are your thoughts? Do you like, some of you could, um, really like the live action Disney movies and I've just fucking, I've just trashed all over them for the last fucking 15 minutes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, I mean, I can't even say like it's a nostalgia thing though. Cause like, the fucking, you know, animated movies are just really good, and the live action ones just aren't. It's, they're not. They're not. I'm sorry. You have so much money and so much creative, brilliant people at your disposal, and you're just doing nonsense. 
It's crazy to me. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe they get it right after all this time with the live action Hercules. Maybe like they fucking knock it out of the park and I'm going to I'm going to have an egg on my face. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I hope beyond hope that I am wrong and it's the greatest movie I've ever seen and I see it seven times in theaters and blast the soundtrack nonstop. I, I probably still will. The songs in, in Hercules are fucking revolutionary. But, <laughs> but like that don't... <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm so nervous. I don't know any of the details of when it's coming out or anything. As soon as they said it, I just, I went, there was like a six fucking page tangent that I sent them over Instagram DMs and they were like so you have uh you have some strong feelings about this and I was like no you don't understand <laughs> I'm just passionate um it's important to me it's important to me and I'm upset I'm also upset I'm complaining today I'm sorry I'm whiny <laughs> the caffeine um I don't know how this came about because I don't I don't, I don't know. But anyway, um, I think eight months ago I was looking at purses online and so I still now get um, ads on Instagram for purses and there is this ad that keeps coming up and it's a designer brand um, and you know... Oh, you know when the designer brands get it right? Mm, doesn't happen often. Does not happen often. Usually it's the same boring recycled brand adorned shit and it doesn't do it for me. But sometimes, sometimes someone on the creative design team just fucking knocks it out of the park and I keep looking at this fucking purse. And it's so gorgeous. It is so cute. It is so exactly what I would use. And I'm furious about it. Because it's fucking $400. And the day that I willingly spend $400 on something that I'm going to fill with Sour Patch Kids and crumpled receipts is the day hell freezes over so I can't. I can't. I won't. I will not. I won't. But she taunts me. She taunts me every time I'm a scrolling through those tarot cards and those memes. She pops up and she's like, you want me? And I'm like, you fucking seductress. Get out of here. <laughs> I had, okay. So... I just, I can't get behind that. I can't, I never have been able to get behind, you know, the, the brand shit. It doesn't mean anything to me. My mom is, uh, she's got a lot of fire in her chart. And so like designer brands are her fucking bread and butter. And she has always been very, very, very fashionable, very up on fashion, very up on luxury. She always <laughs> very like expensive perfume she wore um and uh that that's go that's gorge babe love it she's a stunner she's amazing um i used to think she was like a movie star but she just did movies when i didn't know about it um she wasn't that's not she's she's a nurse but <laughs> but for a long time that's what i thought because i was like you're so glamorous look at the lipstick you wear um <laughs> Um, she's gonna fucking eat that shit up. She is good. Yeah, she's the fact that I said that she's gonna watch this and she is going to fucking she's never gonna stop talking about it. Um, you're welcome, mama. And because <laughs> I don't think I've ever told her that. Um, and I just I could never get behind it. She tried like I remember, um, I think when I graduated, um, she was like, oh, let's go to insert luxury store here and you can pick out anything you want. And I was like, I don't, I don't want, I don't want anything here. I don't want this fucking $400 wallet. Like, I love you. I don't, I don't want, and it was like a big deal. Like, you know, 
that kind of money was not at like extensive disposal you know my mother had fucking three children like that wasn't like a regular thing she was doing it was a very big deal i felt bad because she was so excited because i think for her graduation um her parents had bought her like some some nice coat or something from some like she grew up in a very uh, an area of our city that's very what's the word very like you know there's it's there's no like fucking um like there's no walmart you know like the stores that are it's all like boutiques and like designer brand stores and stuff very like kind of like not tourist town but like very city center type stuff um I guess you would say, I don't fucking know what I'm talking about. It is late. And <laughs> um, so I was like, nah, I don't want to do that. I just, thank you. Thank you. Though. I don't want to do that. Um, and yeah, it just never, it just never appealed to me. It just never, I never understood it. There's too many like names I say in my dog hair covered reading sweater, but you know, like it just never, it just didn't, it just doesn't matter. It's just stuff. I knew you were gonna come out, baby. Um, I'm just saying for me, I don't understand it. And if for some funny reason, I think because I have zero fire in my chart, I have a lot of fire signs around me who are very into designer things and blah, 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 blah. And so they just like, I just can't get excited about it. I cannot get excited about it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't under, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't know. Um, I had a, a friend a few years back, but it was, it was an acquaintance, I guess you would say. Um, and she lived in New York City. Bougie. Actually, she lived in New Jersey, but she told everybody she lived in New York City. Follow along, my love. And, <laughs> and she, um, ended up working for Madison Square Garden. That doesn't fucking sound real. When you tell someone you work for Ma Madison Square Garden, for Madison Square Garden, that's not a real thing that I just said. Those string, that string of words that I just said can't be real. That doesn't make sense. It's like if somebody said like, I work for the fucking um, Academy Awards. It'd be like, no, cause that, what? How does, the fucking fourth wall like where is it like I don't I don't know and so um she wanted to come visit me um but she didn't want to come visit me she wanted to come visit where I lived because she wanted to travel as many places as she could with it that's fine I was here so she was like I'll come see you and I was like great and <laughs> that's nice thank you um and she was coming around my birthday and uh she had texted me and uh, asked me what my favorite color was. And I was like, oh my God, this is so fun. My favorite color is purple. What's your favorite color? And she's like, no, no, no. Like I'm buying you something. And I was like, what's your, what's your favorite color? Like, why, why can't, why can't we have that conversation? Um, and so she got here and she handed me like a, a bag and uh, she was like, open it, open it. And I was like, Okay, I'm, <laughs> I get really excited when I receive gifts, but I also get really, really nervous because I overthink it. And I'm like, I don't want to be so excited that I look like a toddler, but now I'm overthinking how excited I am. So I feel like I'm not reacting enough and I feel like I look upset about it. I get a lot of anxiety. And so, <laughs> um, so I opened it and it was a coach purse. It was a purple coach purse. Um, and she was very into designer brands and there are some people who will give gifts that are like things they would like to receive you know because we didn't we didn't know each other that well she didn't even know my favorite color before then we didn't know each other very well um and it was it was incredible i had never received a gift of that financial standing <laughs> before and i just i didn't she I, I'm so, this, I'm not, I, this, I, she bought my daughter, who was very, very, very young at the time, 
very, 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 very young. Um, she bought her the like matching like wallet wristlet thing in the same color. She's like, she's gonna be like a Kardashian kid. And I was like, don't you fuck. <laughs> don't say that about my child, thank you. <laughs> Never. Um, but that was like what she she wanted for, for you know, future children that she was hoping to have and stuff. And I just, we couldn't, we couldn't, we, we could not have been on more different wavelengths in this scenario. Um, and I was gobsmacked. I like didn't, I was like, do I, do I give you like my arm now? Do we, are we like, do are we engaged? Like, what do I give you for this? Like, I can't just receive. I don't know how to do that. I don't, <laughs> I'm not good at that. What do I, <laughs> do I buy you a car now? Like, what do we do? <laughs> Me meanwhile, <laughs> this was before, um, before I had, uh, been fortunate enough to be able to buy uh, a new car so I was driving this fucking janky prey on everyone you've ever known that the fucking brakes are gonna hold up steering's a little janky sometimes she goes like this so you gotta hold on tight to make sure that it goes where you're supposed to go falling apart fucking muffler sounds like an fucking pack of lions attacking each other type thing and I'm driving her around in this and she's like here's your coach bag and I was like what the fuck oh my fucking god um and I didn't know because like my daughter was so young at the time that all I was all I would have done with that purse was use it as like essentially a diaper bag like it was gonna be filled with fucking snack crumbs from my daughter and coloring pages and socks because she is a girl of the earth and if I put her in socks she rips them off and she's like no I need to be free and I'm like baby I support that um <laughs> I get it I understand I'm so sorry I tried to put you through a situation you didn't want to be a part of um <laughs> Even though it's January. Um, <laughs> and I didn't, I was so, like, I can't, I don't know how to, how to do that. Ooh, they made my tea really good. Um, I, yeah, I was like, I don't know, like, I don't, money is such a crazy thing to me. I don't. I don't, I don't get it. I honestly do not understand it. If I have it, I would want to, to give it. It makes me really shut. It's okay. Since that time, I have understood that money is, is an energy. It's a tangible energy, which is why I like to, to give it out so much. And I understand receiving it, very grateful for it. But as I receive it, I like to, you know, exchange it back. It's, it's an energy now. But at that time, I was like a single mother who was driving the shitty janky car and <laughs> was just starting out my own business and <laughs> and paying off like fucking uh you know shit and I had received this million dollar bag and I was like uh, uh, <laughs> I don't ah um and so I didn't, I didn't know what to do. And she like, she, she was a very intense person. She's like, you need to use it. And I was like, oh my God, because I, I get so nervous around things that cost money. So fucking nervous. When I bought my car, as gorgeous as she is, I was petrified to drive it. I was so scared to drive it because I was like, what if I f instantly forget how to drive, even though I've been doing it for a decade? What if I forget how to drive and I drive into a ravine instantly? And like, <laughs> and like when I bought um, a new computer and it was like the, at that point, probably the priciest thing I had ever purchased. Um, I didn't open, I didn't open, I didn't take it out of the box for three months. <laughs> I 
I had paid all this money for it. I needed it. I actively needed it for work, but I was so afraid of how much it cost that I just kept it on a shelf in my closet. And I was like, nope, I take, I take it back. I, I'm, I can't, I can't possibly, I couldn't possibly, um, now I use it and I love it, but uh, you know, so <laughs> she was like, no, you need to use it. So she took this stuff out of like my ratty falling apart shitty purse that I had had at the time. It wasn't even a purse. It was a diaper bag that I used for everything because that's, <laughs> that's what it was. And, um, put all of the stuff in this coach bag and it was so, I got so, nervous I don't know I don't know I was so <laughs> so much money um yeah I mean it was yeah it was very nice of her it was incredibly sweet of her and I was so grateful that I forgot how to speak for like quite a while um because it was such a beyond incredibly sweet and thoughtful gesture it was amazing um it was crazy um, but I mean, yeah, so I still have the bag. It's in my closet. Um, it has a giant juice stain on it that I can't get out because my daughter spilled a juice box in it. Um, <laughs> and I could, I could not clean it because I don't know what the fuck that material was. Um, ex expensive kind, um, couldn't clean it. So it's just, it's there for safe keeping um and I I don't um that person that that acquaintance doesn't speak to me anymore because she found out what I did for a living which she didn't find out because she al already knew because I had told her um but she tried to do this weird thing when she like came here and she was like interviewing me about what I did um, and I was happy to talk about it I was happy to explain it because you know I'm happy to talk about what I do and I I I, I'm very interested in people that I care about. So it's like, yeah, tell me everything. What, what is accounting? So true. What is Madison? Why is her garden square? How do you buy things for such a vast building? It's like, <laughs> explain that to me. Cause I, I'm genuinely intrigued. Um, and, <laughs> um, and she th it essentially then became convinced that I was uh, demonically possessed. So she was like, no thanks, keep the bag. And I was like, this has been a crazy three days. <laughs> so yeah, we don't, we don't talk anymore. And now I have a, a juicy bag just, just sitting around. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's <laughs> And that's today's Rose Bloom story time. Twinkle 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 graphic. Um, <laughs> oh, I feel very giggly today. Hello, 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 my darlings. My name is Katie of Rose Bloom Readings. Thank you so much for being here with me today, my loves. I can never, I can never get through it seriously when I hear the like switch up in my voice from Rose Bloom Storytime to like the introduction. It's always really funny to me. Um, today's reading, my darlings, we are going to be looking into your next important connection. And I've gotten a few requests. Um, oh my God. Pardon me. Oh my God, I'm ruining everything. I'm making, I'm making it bad. I'm making it bad. Um, I've gotten a few requests from viewers um, who have asked for... Jesus Christ. Hello. Hello. This is upside down. This is upside down. I didn't notice this entire time. Um, I have dyslexia. You can't, you can't judge me for it. <laughs> you're not, you're not allowed. <laughs> Um, what the fuck am I saying? Um, but requests from people for like, um, recently somebody asked for like, who's your next best friend? A few months back, somebody asked for like your next platonic connection. Somebody, uh, has asked for 
like your next, you know, important person. So I thought we would kind of, kind of mishmash it all in based on, you know, the encouragement of spirit. So we're going to be looking into your next important connection, my loves. And I feel as though very strongly, um, each group is going to be very different. I feel like we could get, um, we could get romantic partners. We could get, you know, new significant friends. We could get people who are like family, coworkers, yada, 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 yada. Um, I do feel like each group is going to be very individual, my darling. So I'm very excited for that because I really enjoy doing, um, readings that have like a more generalized topic, but the individual reading is, is, different and unique for each person because then it's I don't know it's very sweet when those messages find the people that they're meant you know they're meant to find it's very cute so that's what we're going to be looking into today my loves and I feel as though it's very fitting because I was talking about this a little bit I can't remember if it was in the last reading I posted or if it was on a patreon reading I cannot remember but I was talking about it recently I recently said the words that are coming out of my mouth currently um where despite that this is a timeless reading it's always a timeless reading unless I state otherwise my loves um but it does feel as though at the time that I'm filming and posting this it's the beginning of June we're heading into summer and the general consensus amongst um a lot of astrologers and intuitives and so on and so forth that I've been uh talking with and that I viewed and and so on and so forth um that this summer or if it's not summer where you are the next coming like three three four months um are going to be hugely uh impactful for connections um platonic familial romantic it just feels like people are really going to be finding or deepening connections with the people that they're meant to have in their lives so it's very exciting so like a very good time to do this reading my loves um we have pile number one my darlings wise woman of the grove grace pile number two is phoenix transmutation pile number three is wild rose fairy love and pile number four is guardians of the land protection as always my loves i will have the timestamps down below in the description box if you're feeling a little foggy a little unsure you can take a long breath in through your nose hold it for four seconds and let it out slowly through your mouth my loves trust your intuition whatever you feel drawn to is what is meant for you my darlings if you feel drawn to more than one pile it's most likely because there are messages that are meant for you in each of the piles that you feel drawn to my loves take the messages that resonate with you leave behind what doesn't for those who are meant to receive it take your time my loves you've got this i trust you there is no rush feel free to pause feel free to take a moment feel free to have a snack and come back to it whenever you're ready i will also be ready and we will get started hello 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 my loves group number one if you picked this card wise woman of the grove grace um this is your reading for your next important connection i will say my loves either you have some sort of little like buggy fluey type thing that's kind of like effect it feels like a headache is a very 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 prime um symptom of it but it also feels like a bit of nausea um you could have like a bit of a, a bit of a stomach flu a bit of a flu bug um you also could just be really hung over today um so that's that's what what that is for this hi how are you my loves um we have spirit guardian of autumn letting go um we have the emperor Ooh, ooh. and we have the three of wands okay okay my loves so i am feeling very strongly as though the important person that you are inviting into your life subconsciously um, but the person that is coming into your life has very much a caretaker, um, or fatherly energy. And mm, it feels like there's some element of, some element of forgiveness to this connection. And so the father energy coming back could literally be your father, your stepfather, your grandfather, um, somebody who there was at some point a massive falling out. There was a massive disconnect. I feel as though if the father energy is your father, stepfather, grandfather, um, some of you even older brother, it 
you haven't been in contact with them for a very, very long time. I feel as though there's been no contact following like a significant um, falling out. Um, others of you, it feels as though with your biological father or your father figure um, from from childhood, that falling out happened, that disconnect, that no contact situation happened. And so for those of you that resonate with that and are like, no, absolutely not. I would not welcome that person back into my life. Perhaps they're no longer around in the physical. Um, it feels as though there is very a very secure, good energy. This, if, if, you know, your, your father, stepfather, who your father figure, um, is not, uh, is still in the physical, but you would not, you would rather fall into a lava pit than even look at them again, then that is not who is coming into your life, my loves. Then it would still be a father figure. It does feel for a lot of you as though this is somebody who's teaching you something. So this could be very literally a teacher or professor uh, at school or university, um, or for those of you who are going into like residencies or internships, somebody who works above you or who are getting, um, some of you, it's either you're getting a new job or you're aware that you're getting like a new manager or a new boss kind of position. Somebody who's working directly with you though. Like, it's not like you were like, you know, working in the mail room and this is the CEO and then it like, this is, you know, it's, it's not a Hallmark movie. It's like, <laughs> it's like somebody who would be working directly with you who has this emperor, king of kings energy, who feels very, you just get along really, really, really well. You get along, like they're just very warm and you kind of feel not a familiarity in them, but you feel this sort of, it's a very healing thing um, because I feel as though, you know, to have somebody um, acknowledge that, you know, you're you're achieving what you're going after and uh, that you're doing a good job. So for somebody to say that they're proud of you in that energy is going to mean everything and is going to heal a lot of inner child wounds in relation to your father figure because I do feel as though a lot of you in your childhoods, you, you did not have... Um, a worthwhile father figure who is deserving of you, my darlings. Um, and so there is this energy coming in and it does feel like this has been a long time coming, but it also feels like interestingly enough with letting go and the three of wands, you know, she's going somewhere, she's been working for it, but she's also, she's been working for it. And, um, it feels like, you know, funnily enough, you're kind of at a point now where you're like, I don't think I need that. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think I need, um, you know, that, that person and I don't need that approval and I don't need whatever it is they would be giving me. And, you know, the interesting thing is, my darlings, is that usually when we kind of get into that energy of like, no, I'm good. Or we get into the energy of like, I really don't see that happening is usually when we're about to kind of turn a corner on a situation. And so it really feels like, feels like this also comes about at like rather an emotional time. So it could be that, you know, if this is somebody who starts working with you, um, or at the very least somebody that you see regularly could be like for some of you, um, who live in like apartment buildings, it could be like a new, like doorman or something, someone that you interact with regularly. Um, patience and planning. Yeah emotional withdrawal and third eye shopper. Yeah. Okay. Um, it does feel as though, um, despite the fact that you don't feel like you need this, it's still really nice to have. And, um, It does, you know, even though you've done a lot of work, you've done a lot of healing, a lot of you have seen counselors, a lot of you, especially in your romantic relationships, especially if you're attracted to, um, uh, to, uh, men or masculine energies, it really has, you know, you, you've been through circumstances that have allowed you to kind of look back on yourself and be like, okay, I need to, I need to work on this. I need to fix this because, 
I'm, I'm done with this. I'm done with inviting, you know, these negative energies into my space. I'm done with tolerating people. I'm done with fixing people's problems, I'm hearing you say. And so you've done the work and you have let go of a lot of people and you've removed yourself from a lot of difficult situations. And I'm very proud of you for that, my loves, because that is incredibly difficult to do. And you've done that actively. And so despite the fact that you've done all this work and you've done all this healing... And that's fantastic. You're in a fantastic place. You're in a place where it feels like you have the closure to be like, I don't think I need that. I don't think I need, you know, somebody to kind of swoop in and, um, and give me that sort of fatherly, you know, pride and, and affection that I never had. And it's like, you know, so this, this very much surprises you, but it also, because of, because you don't feel like you need it, it feels a lot more authentic. It feels like, you know, you kind of notice it more and you get to have, you know, more of a, a healthy and healing dynamic with this person rather than, you know, if say you were in a really like desperate state for, you know, approval from a father figure or for recognition from a father figure. And then this person came in, it, it wouldn't have as positive an impact on you. It would actually probably end up being quite unhealthy for you, my loves. So you've really welcomed this because you've done the work on yourself. You've gone to counseling, you, you've, you you know, processed these, these deep emotions that, you know, I feel like for years you kind of just push down as being like, well, that's just the experience that I had. And, you know, some people just have that experience and, you know, to go through the process of, of having people acknowledge that, no, what you went through wasn't fair to you and it wasn't something you should have gone through. And it, it, you know, it's unfortunate that you went through it and, and to have people be like, I'm sorry, that's something you experienced is a very meaningful thing, my love. And so the fact that you've done that work and you've done that healing because you've acknowledged that yourself are worthy, that you've acknowledged that you yourself are worthy of that healing and that you're worthy of, you know, feeling, yeah, that's very nice, my babies, feeling worthy and feeling, you know, cared for and feeling valued and respected. Thank you, my loves. Um, yeah. Oh, did you want to come out as well? I feel like you did. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So we have miracles, leadership, and illumination. That's very beautiful. And bottom of the deck is purification. Um, so it really does feel like, you know, you, you've manifested this because you've given yourself everything that you, you've lacked. And it feels like, you know... Many people, when they go through situations where, you know, they haven't received the affection or attention or care or nurturing that they need, they seek it out, seek it out elsewhere. It's a very normal human reaction to, to going through that kind of thing, my loves. And so the fact that you were able to, you know, recognize that that is what I feel as though a lot of you were doing and to be like, no, that's not... That's not what I want. I don't want to go down that road. I don't want to experience that anymore. I need to stop this. And you stopped it. You disconnected yourself from those dynamics. You put love and effort into yourself. You you valued yourself in the way that you deserve to be valued, my loves. You respected yourself in the ways that you deserve to be respected. And you feel fantastic. Honestly, you feel very, very at peace. And so... Either, you know, this person comes into your life when you're in this state of peace or when you're in this state of peace, you know, for those of you that resonate with your father figure being somebody who, you know, raised you or had a part in your childhood or something to do with that could be your biological father figure, etc, etc. Um, it feels as though when they come back into your life, it's because they have, you know, seen the truth of their ways and they've seen the error in their ways and they have seen the way that what they have done has affected you or perhaps part of your healing was to reach out to them and to you know notify them of, of what they did and how they made you feel and how they affected you just for the sake of that closure not to feels like for those of you that that resonates with you didn't have an expectation on that you didn't have like you know we're gonna fix this it was like I just need to say this to you. I need you to know what you did 
and how it made me feel. And, you know, so for those of you that are having those figures reach out to you, it feels as though they're only reaching out to you because they are in a state in which they are different and they themselves are healed and they want to rectify it. And it feels like you are very, very strongly protected, my loves. Your intuition is also incredibly strong. And so if, you know, it felt wrong to have them reach out to you, you would not accept them. So it feels like, you know, if it feels as though they are different and if it feels as though, you know, you want to meet them for coffee and, and talk things through or catch up or just see them in person or however that resonates for you, my darlings, to trust your intuition in that regard. Because you're going to know, you know, if you meet up with them and you're like, no, this isn't for me, then you just get up and you walk away, my babies. But it feels like, you know, it, it's just either way, if this is a person who you're working with, if this is a person who you're just interacting with daily, if this is a person from your past, they would not have come sooner than when you were on the other side of your own healing, when you were, than when you were on the, you know, other side of your own sort of finding your peace chapter. Um, because it, it feel, you feel very peaceful, my loves. I mean, we have wise woman of the grove grace, like you feel... you feel like you need nothing more from that situation. So the fact that you are receiving this and that you're getting more is really just, it's, it's just a gift, my loves, because it really feels like it's sort of, you know, the final page of a book that like could be finished, you know, like the book had its ending and, you know, the book was understandable in the way that it existed and it finished but when you get the final page you're like oh, okay know that now it now it really feels final now it really feels like you know this book like everything was tied up sort of a thing and that's what this situation feels like my loves um but it's definitely a a fatherly energy my loves or at the very least a very 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 um masculine leader of of your family type dynamic or leader of your household type energy um because we're getting so much aries energy here we have the emperor we have leadership we have last quarter moon and aries work through your feelings absolutely my loves um and i mean last quarter moon gemini clear your mind and first quarter moon in Cancer, push through any insecurity. Yeah, I was literally uh, just about to say, like, this person coming into your life in whatever form they come into your life will bring up feelings for you, my loves. And, you know, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they will bring up, you know, kind of fears and anxieties and insecurities that you have already worked through um, and it's going to catch you off guard and it's going to kind of it's going to have you sort of put like your haunches up and sort of like you know like when a cat kind of raises its back and its fur gets all prickly it's going to have you kind of be like what is this <laughs> but it it's something that you're going to feel a pull to at a very subconscious level and a very intuitive level and you're going to be like no this, you know, maybe I did need this. Maybe I did need, you know, my my boss or my supervisor to acknowledge how much work and effort I put into what I do and that they're proud of, you know, what I do. Maybe I needed somebody to, you know, if you have like, if it's the doorman that you resonate with, you know, seeing the hours that you work and having them acknowledge it. Like, it feels like you've already given yourself the healing through that situation and through, you know, what you lacked but it's like okay to hear that from this person who who sees me in an authentic way and to to receive this kind of you know acknowledgement and confirmation from them it does feel nice and that's really it's the last page of a book my loves that's really what it is like it, it honestly feels like the 
longevity or lack of or you know the the permanence of that this person has in your life is in your hands and for a lot of you i have to be honest my loves there is so much moon energy here it doesn't feel like this person you know is going to be a permanent aspect of your lives um, unless you decide otherwise, you know, if this is your father figure, your biological father who you're reconnecting with after years and you meet up and you catch up and you're like, oh my God, this is a fucking night and day difference between who you were and who you are. I would love for you to be a part of my life. Some of you have, you know, partners, some of you have family, some of you are like far into the lives that you're very happy to be living and if you want this person to be a part of your life, my loves, that is something that's on, on the table. But I feel as though for the majority of you, this is just a last page of the book. Some of you, it's the start of a whole new book, whole new chapter. Um, but others of you, it's like, no, it's just the last page. You know, we'll talk. I'll receive, you know, this acknowledgement, this whatever I need that I didn't even know I needed or that I maybe forgot I needed or that I decided I didn't need and that'll be that and and then you move past it and then you receive you know your completed book and you put it on the shelf and you move on to the next book my loves um, but it does feel as though you know that kind of acknowledgement that recognition that healing is very important despite how wonderful it is that you've done you know so much healing on your own it feels like you know this this part still needs to happen kind of a thing my loves oh we got oh 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 oh, oh. yeah king of wands yeah you're like i'm tired of words i want i want action i want tangible proof that especially resonates um if the person you know who you're thinking of in this reading is somebody who you grew up with or somebody who you have um, history with, my darlings. It's like, yeah, you know, words, words mean nothing to you anymore. You know, people talking means nothing. It feels as though you only accept proof of authenticity in the form of action now um, because you're just, you've had your fill of words. You've had your fill of you know, words holding no value because action, action is real. Action is proof. When you've done something, you've done it. You know, you can say something and never act on it, but when you act on something, it's done. You've done it. You've, you've proven that you can and will do it. Um, and so that's really what this feels like. It feels like, you know, a subconscious call, call to action, call to prove to you that, uh, you know, they, they mean what they say and they mean their apology or they mean their acknowledgement. And I do feel as though, yeah, there's definitely going to be tangible proof in the form of action for you in this situation. My loves. Oh, that's very strange. That's so weird. Okay. Yeah. Ac we were just... <laughs> That's wild. Um, that's so fucking weird. Okay, sure, I guess. Um, we have the Ace of Wands, which is all about, it's a new beginning, but it's it's a passionate new beginning in the form of action, of taking action, of, of acting on something. Okay, thank you for the confirmation, my loves. That was incredibly dramatic. That's, okay, okay. Nothing is for nothing, my babies. That feels like this situation. If this is a person from your past or if this is somebody who you end up working with, somebody you end up, you know, connecting with in a however kind of way, that's what it feels like. It feels like it's just fucking out of nowhere and it catches you by surprise in such a hugely intense way that, like, I feel like you reacted the way I did. We were like, what? <laughs> like, like, I was looking at the card and I was like okay, it's a tarot card from not this deck. But my brain wasn't like processing that. I was like, okay, what do, what do I do? <laughs> it feels like that's kind of your thought process when this person like, you know, acknowledges you or, or reaches out to you or shows up or whatever the fuck, you know, role they take. And, um, you're you just you you're gobsmacked my babies you're like well 
I, what? <laughs> but then, you know, you accept it and then it's exactly what you needed, my loves. That was very symbolic. Thank you, spirit. Oh my, oh my goodness, the drama of it all. It does feel as though um, this, this person could be a fire sign. Cause they do have, there's a bit of flair to what they do. You know, my babies, there's a bit of, bit of showmanship. And for those of you that have a past with this person, you're like, you can fucking shush. I'm just letting you know, my babies. I'm just letting you know. Victim mentality. Yeah. And, um, oh, that, oh, ah, okay. No, I'll take it. Thank you. Okay. Calm down. Thank you. Um, Okay, so victim mentality, new supportive connections, absolutely, thank you for the confirmation, my loves. Um, a creative endeavor, oh, yeah, 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 a loving, excuse you, the loving man and joyous fun, okay, 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 so, yes, um, it definitely feels like a fear that some of you have, even as I'm speaking about this now, a fear that you have is being in some way, grand or small, bound to this person or being, you know, kind of like trapped in this scenario. It's like, okay, if this is someone from my past and like, I don't want them to continue to be in my life, like what if they just, what if they keep bothering me, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or it's like, what if, you know, I can't get over the fear that like history will repeat itself. Or if this is a new connection, it's like, what if, you know, I get too attached to this person and, and, you know, something happens that I don't want to happen. And with this, this card, my loves victim mentality, like they're bound to nothing. You know, my loves, they have these ropes binding their wrists, but the ropes aren't tied to anything. They're barely flipped around the leg of this bed. Like that's not, you know, the... They're worried that they're trapped in this dangerous situation, but it's it's all in their head kind of a thing, my love. So you are not going to be placed in a situation beyond your control. You have full control of this situation, my loves, because you have done so much work and put so much effort into your life to ensure that control is no longer ever something you, you lose or that you don't have to begin with, my darlings. And you do have full control of this situation, my loves. Nothing will happen or will take place that you are not completely okay with. You know, nothing happens that you don't, you don't give permission to my darling. So, so be assured of that because that feels like a very important thing to come through to, to reassure you that way. My loves, another message that's coming through is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my loves. Yeah. Throat chakra stuff. There is, there is stuff that you have to say, my loves, things that, you know, you may have written down in journals. You may have written down in letters that you've then set on fire or flung into the fucking ocean. And <laughs> And, but those things need to be said. Um, and it feels like some of you, you know, who are connecting with somebody from, from your past, biological or otherwise, um, those of you, you know, could be starting your families. You could, you know, have recently met the person that you know you want to, to spend the rest of your life with and perhaps have a family with. You could already have a family. Um, and for some of you, that sort of final page in the book is this person who, you know, does have some place in your history, you want them to, to see, you know, where you're at in your life. And you, it's kind of not bragging rights, but you kind of want, you just want them to witness it and, and kind of like, kind of be like, you know, I've done really well. So, and like, <laughs> And for some that can be healing. And for others of you, it's like, you know, you just want, you know, you want your children or your, or your child or your partner to, to know like that part, that aspect of your history, even if it's not a permanent aspect, even if it's not, you know, somebody who they're going to know forever, unless you decide they should be my loves. But with the loving man here, this is very sincere energy, my babies. This is very honest and truthful and authentic. And this is a very, very, very heart-centered offer. Um, this is not somebody who, you know, is, 
sort of feeding their own ego by rekindling, you know, your connection or by reaching out to you. Um, for some of you who have a history with this person, it does feel as though um, part of what causes this person to reach out to you could be um, they could have uh, lost somebody. They could have lost a partner of theirs. Some of them could be dealing with um, uh, circumstance in regards to their health that has caused them some there's a situation that's caused them to do a lot of reflecting um and a lot of very 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 much needed deep thinking on you know their actions and their mistakes and their regrets and they do want to rectify them but it does feel as though however this situation resonates it this this is very genuine you can really trust you know that that the action of reaching out and that the desire to reach out does come from a heart-centered place my loves um and it feels like you know even if you don't realize it um we have eight and eight here my loves and we have two sevens so eights and sevens big confirmations for you as well my loves months of july and august as well could be very significant for this situation um but it feels like even if you don't fully realize it you know you you're really going to benefit from having that last page of your book, my loves, that, you know, you didn't even realize was missing uh, for most of you. Um, and it's going to be really good for you. I feel very strongly, my loves. Is there anything else? Ooh, they give me a shiver and they tell me, no, group number one. Whew, starting off strong, my babies. My goodness gracious. That was very, that was... That was dramatic stuff going on over here, my babies. I hope that you enjoyed that, my loves. Um, if you did, please feel free to let me know by leaving a comment. Um, I love hearing from you guys. Love talking to you. Um, if the reading resonated, my energy resonated, please consider subscribing, my darlings. All of my links for Patreon that has the extended 18 plus readings, the exclusive monthly readings, um, and the monthly forecasts, as well as... Uh, my Instagram, my Etsy store, and my email for more information on private readings are down below in the description, my loves. Thank you so much for being here with me. I wish you all the best, my loves. And I will say, I will say um, that there is a lot of pride surrounding you, my loves, for the actions that you have taken, for the healing that you have brought yourself. Uh, you've done a lot of very difficult work um, for the sake of loving yourself. And that's a very wonderful thing, my loves. So a lot of pride for you. I'm very proud of you. Spirit is very proud of you. I hope you are very proud of you. Thank you so much for being here with me, my darlings. I love you very, very much. Bye. Hello, 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 my beautiful loves. Pile number two. Sorry, my hands are shaky. I've had a lot of caffeine. <laughs> File number two, if you picked this card, Phoenix Transmutation. This is your reading on your next significant connection. I'm hearing past life for some reason. Um, <laughs> so some some sort of reason, if only someone could tell me what that reason was. Um, me, it's my literal fucking job to tell you what the reason is. <laughs> um, so it does feel as though... We're going to get more into it, but I... F mm -hmm. Transmutation past life. Okay. 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 So this feels, I will say, I will say this feels very platonic for the majority of you. I will also say I'm hearing found family. Um, and it does feel like, you know, past life plays a role in that. And it, I'm feeling soulmates, but it feels like a platonic role, but somebody who feels very familiar, um, somebody who you feel as though you've known forever, uh, and somebody that you've been missing very much, uh, in this lifetime, my darlings. And we have reflecting pool stillness. Yeah. So, uh, animals are hard. Um, <laughs> swans are always soulmates for me my darlings and interestingly enough um ponds like going into a pond is very 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 connected to past lives for me when I do past life readings um for myself or for others that's something that I always do is kind of see myself like 
sort of falling into this body of water, whatever form it takes, and kind of flipping out of it. And when I rise up from it, I'm in this past life sort of situation. So that's very, very resonant with that. Threes, 33s, and 333s are big numbers for you, my loves. Um, we have the Five of Swords. And we have the Four of Cups. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so for some of you... I was getting this message a little bit earlier and I didn't, I wanted more confirmation before I, before I brought it up. Um, some of you could have had a, okay. All right. So some of you could have had a very, very, very close, very important friend or sibling, um, who you loved very dearly, who is no longer in the physical. And if that resonates with you, I'm very, very, very sincerely sorry, my loves. Um, but it feels like, okay. For those of you that this is going to resonate with, you're going to know that it resonates with you, you know, my darlings, because it feels like in, in yourself, through dreams, through confirmations of yourself, you've received confirmation that when you have a child or for some of you, you know, if, you know, your, your siblings are having a child or your, your close friends or so someone close to you is having a child, you have received confirmation that your person who you miss very dearly, who you love very much, who you feel this past life soulmate connection with will return to you in the form of this new birth. Others of you, it does feel as though Okay, we're tr we're trying to tiptoe around it, but however you slice it, there's some heaviness here, my babies. Um there is definitely a strong sense of grief. Um in this pile, there is a strong sense of, of loss. And for some of you, it doesn't have to be so literal, so literal, fuck me. So literal, <laughs> literal, that was wild. That thing I just said, literal as, as you know, a, a loss in, in this physical lifetime. Some of you, it could be just a loneliness, just very much, you know, a, a knowledge of sort of missing someone who you might even not know that you're missing. You might not even realize that you're missing a person, my loves, but it does feel as though there is this very deep seated sense of, of grieving of loss. Others of you, you know, you could have experienced loss. And again, if that resonates, I'm extremely sorry, my loves. That is a very, very, very difficult thing to go through. Um, but it feels like this person, this, this soulmate of yours, this important person is returning to you. And for some of you, it could be that you experience, you know, grief or you experience loss and then very serendipitously, this person, you know, comes into your life. You know, maybe you start a new job. Maybe you move to a new place. It feels as though there's a sense there, there is a significant transformation. There is a significant shift and a significant change with the four of cups as well. That confirms it. It's like, you know, we've made the decision that what's here is not for us anymore. And, and, you know, we're moving on to that fourth cup to what we actually want, what we're meant to be having. So you could have moved. It feels significant. You know, you changed like either jobs, you've changed locations where you work or you've completely changed career paths, um, changed where you're living, changed your housing situation, um, changed the people around you, you know, changed up your, your social circle. And so that leads you to connecting to this person. But this transmutation, this impactful transformation has to take place for this person to return to you, my loves. And it feels as though this person, this gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful, loving soulmate that makes you feel there is so much love here, my babies, like right in the center of the chest, there is so much love here. And it feels as though that recognition is undeniable, my darlings. There is no there is no sense of like, is it? What if? How do I know? Like it's shown through, you know, if this is somebody who you have known in the physical, who you have lost, um, who's returning to you, there's going to be, you know, um, patterns in, in behavior. And, you know, 
is something very, very obvious, something that, you know, is impossible to deny. And, um, oh, what am I pulling first? Uh, okay. Um, and for those of you, you know, that, that resonate with, um, you know, this person coming back through, through a child, what happened to this card? Oh my God. Um, a story is coming up, partnerships and alliances. Yeah. This feels very much like, um, oh, I can't remember what movie I'm seeing. I'm seeing like the scene, but like very much like somebody grabbing someone and like pulling them up out of, you know, a situation that they feel stuck in, a situation that they feel trapped in, a situation that perhaps they even feel as though they won't make it out of. Um, but I'm, I'm, spirits reminding me of a story that I heard many, many, many years ago from a family member of mine, um, who was talking about a friend of theirs. Um, and, um, their friend had passed away while their partner was pregnant. And th when the child was born, the, the friend of theirs who had passed away slept in this very, like very unique and very specific position that like not a lot of people sleep in. Like it wasn't just, you know, a generic position. Like it was like a certain positioning of an arm and a hand and the body. And it was very, very, very specific. And this child, um, who did not know, um, this, their father basically, um, who, who, you know, did not know their father, but was also just, just a small, small little baby. Um, when they were a bit older, they ended up sleeping in this very same position. And so, you know, that's, those are kinds of things that you like, you can't deny. Do you know my babies? And like, not in such a literal sense as like this person, you know, being a direct relation, uh, to their father. And so, you know, DNA or something could have a, an effect on that. But the point is like, there's going to be something that, um, you can't deny like a confirmation like that, where you're like, okay, that's way too specific. And that is way too, too accurate and too strong. Um, you know, a circumstance to even consider it being a coincidence that you can't really deny it, but it does feel as though this person is, I mean, it, it feels like this is like lifelong. Like it feels like this person who is returning to you is in your life forever, my loves. Um, and there's a lot of healing and there is a lot of just so much love through this. And it's, it's, it's beautiful because it's like, I, I was hearing spirits say moving and I'm like, oh, moving on. And they're like, no, moving forward. And it feels like, you know, with this energy as well of partnerships and alliances, like this is what this person allows you to do as well as to move forward in life. Because for a lot of you, my darlings, it feels as though you've been quite stuck. Um, and you've been, you know, kind of unable to, to move, to take step forward, take steps forward. Talking is difficult. <laughs> and so now, you know, you're able to do that. You're able to go forward. You're able to, to move ahead towards better and brighter things. Um, firm foundation. That's gorgeous. That's also for this deck, um, the four of wands, um, which is all about, first of all, all about soulmates. That's 11, 11 energy, my babies, but it's also all about stable and secure foundation in relationships, in, in home, in work, in, in family, in finances. Um, and so it kind of, it, it feels like, like I'm seeing like Bambi when Bambi was first, you know, standing up and, and his little legs were like shaky and wobbly, but he had like Thumper with him to sort of support and encourage like this person feels like Thumper and like you've been, you know, stuck. You've been in this place for so long that when you feel confident enough through their encouragement, their support, their love to rise, like it's not complete steady footing for you, my babies. It's, you know, it's something you haven't done in a while. It feels for a lot of you. It's something that, you know, you might even feel like uncertain about doing, but you have this, this warm, loving support. I mean, we all need a thumper in our lives. That's for fucking sure. And it feels like this person is your thumper and that's just the cutest 
fucking thing. Uh, rest and rejuvenate, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, okay, they're telling me to take this one. Yeah, triumphant success. Okay, gorgeous. Yes, my babies. Yeah, so Ace of Swords energy here, which is you know, one, it's, it's new beginnings. Bottom of the deck is, uh, sun, which in this deck is light, which is beautiful, my babies. Um, but it, you know, it's new beginnings, but it's also, you know, the sword can cut away what no longer needs to be brought forward. It can, you know, the, the 10 of swords is endings. It's, it's, you know, we're done. We can't, go farther in this circumstance we're done with this and then you revert to the the ace of swords which is you know okay we're starting again but we're not taking with us what we don't need to carry anymore we're cutting we're cutting that away and so it does feel like you know that really sort of confirms that this circumstance this connection comes into your life after a significant cutting away you know be that sort of clearing away your social circle, be that changing your job, changing, you know, your living situation, some of you changing your relationships. Um, but it feels like, you know, once you, you've cut away what is bogging you down, what's making your sweet little Bambi legs shake, what's making, you know, you, you feel unsteady and you only have left what is good and what you're meant to have, inner peace, my baby's beautiful confirmation, then this person finds their way into your life. And it's just... It's, it's perfect, my loves. I mean, this card as well feels very soulmate. Um, the two little koi fish, it's like, okay, it's very much the feeling of we're doing this together. Very much the feeling of like, you're never on your own ever again with this person, my love. Like this is, this is an eternal connection. This is somebody who gives you, I'm hearing like a new lease on life. Like you're completely revitalized, um, through the connection that you have with this person, my babies. And it's beautiful. It's really, really, really nice. It feels very comfortable. Like it feels, it just feels like being able to breathe like clearly for the first time in a very, very, very long time, my loves. Um, and with, re uh, with rest and rejuvenate, I am feeling that, you know, Thank you, my babies. That some of you need the the confirmation. We have adventures in abundance. That's gorgeous. And bottom of the deck, we have stillness, which is funny um, because that was also with the swan. But uh, stillness was the one of the first messages we got. So that's a very gorgeous confirmation. And that really resonates with it, like coming like full circle. You know, my loves like it's like I'm coming back around. I'm, I'm coming back. Don't worry. Um... Whoa. Okay. Um, and so I'm hearing from spirit to, to just like, be patient with yourselves, my loves, you know, if, if things feel difficult, if it feels like when you try and stand up, it's too unsteady that you, you feel safer sitting back down. Don't be hard on yourselves for that. Do you know, my loves, like, don't beat yourselves up for it. Don't, um, you know, don't, compare yourself to any other timeline of like, well, this person went through a similar situation and it only took them, took them this long to, to stand up on their Bambi legs. Like my baby, we all stand up on our Bambi legs when it feels right. And when we're able to, my loves, we don't rush ourselves. We don't pressure ourselves. We don't get down on ourselves. If our Bambi legs function at a different time than other Bambi legs. And, um, yeah, so just, you know, being patient with yourselves, being gentle with yourselves. That's funny. We have the, uh, the two fish of the Pisces right on top. We have full moon and Pisces forgive. Okay. You want very specific ones from this one. Oh, I want you. I want you. I want you. Come here. Come here. Come here. There we go. <laughs> there. Oh my God. Um, last quarter moon in Libra. Make time for self love. Beautiful confirmation. Thank you, my babies. And I want, no, oh, no, you went back in. Okay. You don't want to come out. I want you. Oh my God. Everything's happening at one time. Okay. Uh, new moon in Aquarius open up to change. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Yes. So, 
Um, some of you, and we have new moon in the Scorpio go deeper as the bottom of the deck. Scorpio is all about transformation, my loves. And sometimes those transformations are not very comfortable. Um, but some of you could be resisting this, this change, this new chapter, this new phase. Um, even though at your heart of hearts, you know, it's the right choice to make. Some of you could be um you know very resistant to that sort of it feels like a lot of you are like well no I don't want to let go and it's like you're not letting go you're just you know you're lightening your load a little bit you know my love's like you're not forgetting you're not dropping away and it's not disappearing you're taking only what you're able to carry and only what you're meant to keep carrying and you're going forward my loves um so for those of you that are resistant to to this change knowing through confirmation from spirit that it is for your your highest good my loves and it is um what you're meant to be doing and it is action that you're meant to be taking and it feels like um It feels like, yeah, once this change is made, then that is when this reconciliation happens, my loves. But also, when you finally start to heal fully and authentically. Um, because there's so many very strong feelings inside of you I'm picking up on, my loves. We have judgment. Um, like, there is, there is some intense stuff moving through you right now, my babies. Um, we have the Five of Cups again. Yeah, you're having some very strong, strong emotions to what you're going through, my babies. And that's, you know, that's perfectly natural for what you're going through. And that's not comforting. It's just truth. Um, we have the chariot and, you know, some of you are, are sort of incredibly angry. We have the two of cups. I mean, my babies, that, that is soulmates, soulmates. Um, and some of you, you know, are having a very hard time forgiving, you know, the circumstances that you've been going through and knowing that you don't have to do that right now. You're not wrong for the way that you feel, my loves. You know, in moments of, of grief, in the process of grief, nobody gets to tell you the right way to go through it, my loves. You know, it is not a linear path. It's not something that has a start date and an end. Thank you, my loves. Um, an end date. We have the Ten of Swords, which is very interesting because with the uh, with the Ace of Swords, we were talking about that and this card uh, specifically popped up in my head. We have the Five of Swords. Um, and so you you feel it as you're being called to feel it, my darlings, as long as, you know, you're being gentle with yourselves, as long as you're, you know, not doing anything that is causing you more harm uh, than good. And then that in time, that forgiveness will come, my loves, you know, those those heavy feelings that you're going through are not forever, my darlings, but they're what you're experiencing now. And to get through them, you have to be as gentle with yourselves as possible. Um, and knowing that, you know, there is always another side to, to what you're going through, my loves. And it does eventually get lighter and it does eventually get better. And if it's not there now, it will happen for you, my darlings. I do promise you that. Um... And we have the Ace of Pentacles. And so just being, being kinder to yourself, more gentle with yourselves, my darlings, more, you know, it's like, it's almost like you're looking for permission to forgive yourselves for something, but there's no permission needed because you've done nothing wrong. Do you know, my loves, you haven't you've done nothing wrong. You've done nothing that would warrant you needing any kind of forgiveness, my babies, because the fact of the matter is you're doing the very best you can. And what more could anybody, yourself included, expect from you than you doing the very best you can, my loves. And it feels like, you know, that's hard to acknowledge and appreciate because in the day to day, the best that you can looks very different. You know, some days it looks a lot more abundant and more tangible than it did the day before. And some days, you know, the day before it looked a lot more abundant. And now it's, it's like getting up and brushing your teeth and that that's the most, but if that's the best you can do, my loves, then that's the best you can do. And yeah, 
there is there is a lot of confirmation here though my babies that there is another side to this that there is a better side to this that you do get through this and that you do get over it um but for the time being my darlings you know it's it's a matter of just getting through it in the best way that you can being gentle with yourselves, being kind with yourselves and knowing that there is a lot of love surrounding you and that, you know, this connection is coming in at exactly when you need it, my babies, exactly when you need it. And uh, it's going to be wonderful. This is this is something that doesn't fade. This is something that doesn't go away. Um, and it feels like, you know, although it's difficult to really believe right now in time, the way that you're feeling right now, um, won't be as visceral or as clear as it is. You know, it'll be something that you remember without remembering it so clearly that you exist in it again. Do you know what I mean, my darlings? Um, yeah, but a lot of stability and a lot of, some of you are, it feels like, you know, this change that you're, you're feeling drawn to make or that you're you know being urged to make that you feel frightened uh, of making it feels like some of you could be like well I don't know if I can afford to do that I don't know if that's you know in in my best interest and it do it feels like you have that answer already you know what I mean my darlings like it feels like you know the majority of you like you already have the knowledge and confirmation that yes you can afford this like perhaps you know things might be a bit more financially snug than you've kind of grown accustomed to, but it's not like outside of the realms of, yeah, my babies, you're deserving of good things. Um, it's not outside of the realms of what's realistically possible for you in still a comfortable way, just maybe less, less comfortable than you've gotten used to. But you know, if it's a matter of existing in a place or starting fresh in a place that would, you know, make you feel more comfortable in the day to day, make you more comfortable, more confident, you know, existing, then I really think that's worth any kind of, any kind of financial snugness, my darlings, because it's not forever, you know, you do come, come out of that, uh, in time. Um, some of you, oh my, uh, okay, sure. All right. Um, some of you could be, um, feeling very, very, very connected to, um, I'm seeing a certain viewer who, I don't know how many of my readings they watch. They pop up now and then in the comments. I don't know if they watch more than they comment, perhaps. I, I'm not sure. Um, but I'm seeing them pop up in this reading a lot. So it'll be very interesting if they confirm that they're watching this. I don't, I'm not going to say who they are because there's a lot of very, you know, deeply emotional, personal things coming up in this reading. Um, but some of you could be, um, feeling very drawn to reconnecting with like either your, like where you grew up, if you now live somewhere different than where you grew up, where your parents or grandparents grew up, or you could be feeling very connected to your lineage, to your ancestry. For those of you who, you know, have, have knowledge of your ancestry being in a place different from where you live now or different from where you grew up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, and could be looking or could be, you know, kind of tossing around the idea or even having dreams where like you're connecting with your ancestors or even people that like you don't know as your ancestors, but they have like, you know, accents from these pla from these places that you know your ancestors are from, or they, you know, look a certain way, or in your dream you're in, in this place that you know your ancestral, ancestral lineage comes from. And, but either way, you're feeling very pulled to, to where your ancestry exists. And it feels like if that resonates with you, it's very much a confirmation that like, yes, yes, that's going to be really, really good and really healing for you. It's also going to help you feel very heart connected to where you are. And it feels like for a lot of you, that's very much what you need right now. You need to feel connected on an emotional heart centered level to where you're existing to ground you in that space. Um, we have a creative endeavor. We have new supportive connections. That's very cute. Yeah. Uh, present power, 
true love. Oh, that's very sweet. With the mirror again, my loves. The mirror again. Um, and optimism. Okay, that's gorgeous. Yeah, so it's like... There's so much confirmation here. I mean, we have the Ace of Pentacles and we have Optimism, my darlings. There's so much confirmation here. Ace of Swords as well. That you are going to have your new beginning. You know, you're not... This place that you're in now that I feel as though a lot of you are in right now is not permanent, my loves. It's not forever. Um, you're going to have that new, fresh, abundant beginning where it's like anything is possible, and that's what you need. You need that anything is possible. You need that, you know, clean slate. And you're going to have that. There is so much confirmation here that you're going to have it, my darlings. Um, I'm hearing as well um, something to do with like groups or like hobbies or classes. Um, could be how you connect with this person because the mirror here... For me, um, this is soulmates as well, but for me, the mirror is usually like internet you know it's like through a screen and then we have creative endeavor and we have new supportive connections where these these two people are getting along famously and they're <laughs> they're doing like art together and then we have you know the canvas here with a creative endeavor so some of you could you know to kind of get you especially for those of you who are moving um or are living in a different location um which would pertain to moving as well katie you fucking silly billy uh, <laughs> <laughs> you could feel drawn to sort of reaching out and, and, you know, maybe joining, uh, joining a local class or maybe joining, you know, taking classes like in the evening in like a community center or something or at, at a school or something like that and, and meeting a connection that way. Um, but it does feel as though, you know, there's definitely sort of, um, a community that you get to exist in, but then there's this one specific person that just, I mean, it's, it's perfect. My babies, it is wonderful. It's everything that you need. It is so good. It is so healing. It's so familiar. It's like, it's beautiful. I feel like, um, within like the first year of knowing this person as well, I feel like, I feel like this person is on, you know, a similar wavelength to you in a lot of your interests and passions. And I do feel as though a lot of you are quite, um, passionate about your spirituality. You could practice, you know, your own form of divination. You could have your own spiritual practice. Others, you could just be interested in, um, learning about it. And so if you are, it feels like this person would have some, knowledge or passion about it as well because it just feels like things just blend very well in this connection and so within the first year of you guys knowing each other I do feel as though you you both you know get some form of reading and it could be specifically a past life reading um but others of you could just go to go to an intuitive and get a reading and you could get a lot of confirmation that really hits close to home um pertaining to you know a, a significant past life that you two have had because I do feel as though you have had I'm seeing uh between three and six depending um life cycles together but I do feel as though the most recent life cycle that you've had has been very very recent if not this one then very very recently together before this lifetime my loves um, and it feels like the confirmations that you're going to get through that, the messages that you're going to get through that are going to, I mean, again, it's that, it's that, you know, kind of undeniable accuracy type thing. Like, it's like, okay, that clears up so much. That makes so much sense. I have so much clarity now about our connection and about the things that I've experienced and so on and what have you, um, because past life readings are incredible, my loves. They are incredible, not just for connections, but also to help us kind of understand the experiences that we've had and will have in this lifetime and, you know, the sort of feelings that we have in, in this lifetime and so on and what have you. So it's a, but it's a really, really beautiful connection. This person makes you feel very safe very protected. This person also makes you feel much like Thumper to Bambi, my babies. This person makes you feel very steady and very secure and very safe and very invincible and very reassured. Like there, it feels like in the presence of this person, you are reminded of the fact that there is nothing you cannot do, my babies, that there is no strength that you do not have. 
um and it's beautiful it's a really 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 beautiful connection a lot of happiness i feel as though um you both could end up actually living together or living like either there's something about like direct so either if you live in like a flat or an apartment they live confirmation confirmation my loves um <laughs> They had to do it twice because it does feel as though you're the types of people, my darlings, that need like a lot, like when it comes to signs, it's like, okay, I need a really clear one, one that I cannot deny. Um, you know, if it's, if it's like a, a bright yellow butterfly flying by you, it's like, okay, I need to know that was for me. And then you see the butterfly fly past and then you notice it's like 11, 11, like you need like double confirmation for your signs and synchronicities, my baby. So there you go. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but something about like a direct like direct vicinity of living together so either they live right above or below you or right beside you or they they share a living space with you my darlings um but a really 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 wonderful really warm connection just undeniable soulmates my baby's just right in the heart it's beautiful it's really lovely is there anything else oh my god they're like oh wait after they give me the shiver. Some of them, for those of you that resonated with connecting with your ancestry um, and, and moving to or wanting to move to where your ancestry is related to, um, your soulmate could live there. And, you know, that kind of connection really helps you rekindle um, your interest in your ancestry or understand more about your ancestry because it does feel a lot of you feel very called to that my babies and they feel very much like a link to that for good reason now is there anything else? oh god they're like no 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 you got it thank you my babies group number two my sweet beautiful darlings I hope that you enjoyed that if the the heavier messages resonated with you knowing that you are loved supported that I adore you completely and fully my darlings that I am sorry for the difficult things you have gone through and experienced but that you are very 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 safe in the way that spirit loves you my darlings you are very well taken care of very 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 protected and there are good things on their way to you my loves so just remembering to be patient and gentle with yourselves um, as much as you can be, my darlings, because you deserve very good things. You deserve a lot of love. Um, all of my links, my darlings, um, for Patreon that has the extended readings, uh, monthly forecasts, so on and what have you. Um, extended readings as well. My Instagram, my Etsy, and my email for more information on private readings are down below in the description box. Thank you so much for being here with me, my loves. I love you very, 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 very much. And I'm very grateful to you for entrusting me with the messages that came through, my darlings. Thank you again for being here with me. I love you very much. Bye. Okay, before we get started on the reading, chaos. Chaos, my baby. Chaos, my baby. I do feel like you're going to pick this pile, my love. Um, if you don't, I'm going to have an egg on my face. But also, I just... Uh, got your comment on the most recent reading that I posted um, and I <laughs> fucking dragged the shit out of me my love in a way only you can do I do love you so much um, and I knew I knew when I posted that reading with the Rosewood story time where I kept fucking up and being like the most full moon in a long time I knew you were going to pick up on it and drag me to hell for it. And that was literally your comment. Most readings of all time. Well, j check this out. Because this is also going to be one of the most readings of all time. My baby. I love you so much. I really do. Group number three. <laughs> one of the most readings of all time. Ah, oh, drag me within an inch of my fucking life. <laughs> You're so special to me. Mm. Group number three, my beautiful darlings. If you picked this gorgeous card, Wild Rose Fairy Love, the energy in this pile is very strong because while I was shuffling, um, even before I started shuffling the piles uh, in the pile prep, when I was called to pick this deck, I saw this card come out and I was like, mm -hmm. So very strong energy, which it pertains differently to um, 
you know, different circumstances. Sometimes that can mean a lot of people will gravitate towards this group. Other times it can just mean that, you know, the, the people that feel drawn to this group, that the messages that come up in this reading um, are meant to reach are either very strongly intuitive or, you know, your guides are fucking on top of it, my babies. Um, oh my fucking goodness. Okay. 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 If that's, whoa <laughs> if chaos picks this reading i one of the most readings of all time baby oh my shitting goodness that's crazy that's wild um also feels like confirmation regardless because we were talking about chaos and we go okay whew. um we have wild rose fairy love and chaos a storm spirit reverse it i meant to read that the other way i have dyslexia you can't you can't judge me for it the high priestess yeah you're my intuitives my babies you are my intuitives and we have strength you have two major arcana uh in your uh, in your selector pile my babies there's some shit that is occurring okay and i mean that in a very positive way good shit golden shit um it feels okay so what the fuck is happening for starters? Let's hang on. I need more tea. Just hold, 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 hold this. It's, it's, da it's dangerous out there. Take this with you. I need more tea. It wasn't enough. I thought one sip would be enough. It wasn't enough. Okay. I will say off the bat, this is going to be a long reading. I can feel that because I did not drink that properly. Oh my God. Oh God. Um, oh, my butt's stuck. Oh, my butt. I'm rolling away. I am gone. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hello. <laughs> I just went into the next fucking room. Excuse me. Um, I'm back now, baby. Hello. This is going to be a long reading. There's a lot to come through. It does... My... Ooh, so sorry, my love. It does feel... Nice and toasty. It does feel as though... Okay. I mean, you have chaos, storm spirit, and you have strength, my loves. So, storm spirit is reminding me of the tower card. Don't yell at me. I'm only telling you what's coming through. And it feels like on a positive note it feels like the tower has already fallen my loves because in the tower card if you don't know in the in the traditional depiction of the tower card divine intervention the thunder strike the lightning bolt hits the tower and what is not meant to stay what is unstable what is unwanted what is you know no longer deserving of existing in your space in your tower gets sent ass over tea kettle and so it feels like you've heard that call and that's already happened. Um, and, you know, though that divine intervention, my babies, usually the divine step in when we either don't feel as though we can handle something on our own or when we are refusing to handle something on our own, my loves. And so it it's never super comfortable. It's never super easy. Um, it does feel as though in the last two to 12 months, um, you, you've been through quite a bit. I'm hearing you say like, I just can't catch a break. Um, there's been a lot of, a lot of upheaval. I'm hearing a lot of, you know, situations that have felt very stormy, very shaky, very like Indiana Jones, like ground trembling, like, oh, what the fuck do we have to go through now kind of a thing. Um, I feel like some of you could have experience with um, insomnia or you could have experiences of um, seeing a lot of like... Uh, um, very vivid kind of like shadows when you're like trying to fall asleep, especially on your ceiling. Um, it's, it's nothing negative, my darlings. It's just confirmation, you know, it's, it's just 
you have a you have a lot of spiritual presence around you my loves in a, in a positive way in a positive way um and so i i always forget to clarify that because when i say it it's just i'm just like yeah spirits around you all the time there's a lot of spirits around you and then i've said that a few times to people like especially when i go to people you know i used to go to people's houses for private readings or i would even visit like friends and you know they like when I started doing what I do, they'd be like, do you feel anything? And I'm like, oh yeah, no, this house is full in like a, po and <laughs> I would mean it in like a really positive way because that's comforting to have, to be surrounded by, you know, unconditional divine love to me is very comforting, but I forget that I am not a normal person. <laughs> psychologically and so for me to say yeah no this house is full of spirits for someone to hear that about the brand new house they just moved into could be interpreted very differently so much in that way the spiritual energy around you is incredibly positive you are extremely well loved my darlings um but it does feel as though you've been through a lot of circumstance my loves it <laughs> a lot of sorry I can't get chaos out of my head reading of all time um <laughs> It does feel as though you've been through a lot of things that like fact of the matter is there's been a lot of moments my loves in the last two to 12 months where you're like I just wish this would stop I just like when does the roller coaster end I would like to get off is there is there a panic stop button and the universe has been like when this is done shaky ground and you're like <laughs> so true um <laughs> And, but we have strength here, my babies, and there is nothing that you cannot overcome. Um, you, you're warriors, my babies, you got warrior energy and it's okay to get tired and it's okay to get fed up. You are not less than, you are not weaker for finding the things that you have experienced difficult. Um, I feel like some of you could have, you know, friends or family members who are like, oh, well, you know, shit happens and you just get through it. Life's a bitch. And that's, I hate that saying. I hate that saying. Life's a bitch and then you die. Why can't it be nice? Why can't we have nice things and live happily and enjoy ourselves? Oh my fucking goodness. Um, <laughs> I feel like, a, I feel like some of you, um, this is, this is a throwback. Um, but I spoke in one reading, cannot remember one. It was quite a while back about how much I dislike the saying, it is what it is. And I do feel like some of you say that quite a lot. And I'm not trying to drag you, my babies. I'm just saying it is okay to want better things. It's okay to be in a circumstance that feels difficult and to acknowledge it for its difficulty while still knowing that you are going to get to the other side of it. Because again, my babies, there is not anything that you cannot get to the other side of. Um, but it is what it is, is not... Not cutting it, my loves, I gotta be honest, not cutting it because sometimes it's not what it is. Sometimes what it is is just the current circumstance and there's better. You know what I mean, my loves? Um, and so remembering that and not just existing in the space of like, it is what it is because you deserve good things, my sweetest darlings. Truly and genuinely, you deserve very, very, very good things. You're very heart-centered, my loves. You are, bar none, some of the most tremendously gentle-hearted, loving people I have ever had the privilege of. I was going to say feeling, and then it sounded weird, but now I've said it. Connecting with would have been much better. Okay, well, the second thing I said pretend I had said that first. Um, <laughs> and you do have a very deeply intuitive connection, my babies. You see things. Hmm. You see things with a clarity that goes deeper than the perception through your five senses. Um, you, you feel things. It feels as though the way that you interpret a lot of situations is through feeling. Um, and sometimes it does feel as though some of you could 
have like blockages from, you know, connecting to your intuition on a clear level because of fear and anxiety. Um, and because of that kind of, you know, that, that, that worry and that overthinking, some of you, my babies, I got, I'm seeing like a fucking, um, like, uh, in Japan, what the bullet train, like I'm seeing like a bullet train going on, like, you know, they have like, like the fucking, like when you go to see Santa at the mall and they have like the little fucking Christmas village with the train, it's that, but it's a bullet train and that's just going around and around and around and around in your head. Um, and it's fast and it's loud and it's busy and it doesn't stop my babies. Um, and so of course with that going on, how would you be able to accurately access your intuition on a consistent basis, my loves? Um, but it does feel as though very much my darlings. I mean, yeah, we have like the chaos here and chaos isn't, isn't a bad thing. You know, chaos can just mean there's a lot happening at one time, my babies. It doesn't have to be inherently negative. Um, but it does feel as though this sort of chaos, this kind of shaking of the tower um, needed to happen in some regards. Some circumstance you've been through, my darlings, I can't, I can't, you know comfortably say like yeah it had to happen because some things that you've gone through have been tremendously difficult my loves have been absolutely devastating and I'm very sorry that they were things that you had to experience um but other circumstance it feels like very much the the shaking up or part thereof has been in your best interest because it's, it's things that you needed to take action on and I keep hearing boundaries over and over and over and over and over again, I'm hearing boundaries and I'm hearing shift and I'm hearing change. And it feels like those are things that consistently you have resisted despite how much you've wanted them, my loves. How much you've wanted to set boundaries but have been, you know, afraid of of hurting or disappointing or, or letting down or, you know, disconnecting with people who, you know, don't want you to set boundaries. Um, and if there are people in your life, my darlings, who don't want you to set boundaries, it's almost always blatant confirmation that you need to set boundaries. Because of course, the people that don't want you to set boundaries are going to be upset that you're setting boundaries. They don't want, they don't want you to block or diminish the access they have to you, my loves. But if there are people who aren't respecting the fact that they have that access to you, but also don't want it to go away or stop, they should have less or no access to you, my loves. And, you know, there are things that have needed to change. And it is in the things that have needed to change. It does feel as though for the most part, it's been in your best interest, my darlings. And it does feel as though the things that have needed to, sh to shift and change have needed to do so to make room for better. Um, Cause there's a lot of better coming in my babies. I have to say there's a lot of better. And uh, it feels like, it feels like a mixed bag. It feels like objectively, you know that very good things are coming your way, my babies. Things that, you know, you're not just kind of stumbling on by accident. No, you have consciously manifested these things. You have consciously worked towards these things. You very consciously want these things. However, when that bullet train gets going, my babies, and I got to tell you, it doesn't fucking stop. It's That's 24-7 service. Um, it feels like... <laughs> it feels like... You can get caught in your head and be like, what if, what if it's not happening? What if those dreams aren't, you know, what I'm having? And it's like, shh, my sweet, my sweet baby, my sweet, beautiful darling, my absolute little, little honey treasure pot. It, yes, it is very much happening. Absolutely. fucking -lutely. I think it goes without saying, but I am being called to say it. So I'm going to say it. The person you're connecting to is a romantic connection, my loves. Um, and I feel that incredibly strongly, like with a fucking blinding intensity. So if you are not interested in a romantic partner, and I never say this, I never say this. And the fact that I'm saying this feels like it's very solid confirmation. Um, if you are not wanting a romantic partner, if you are not open to that, if you're like absolutely fucking not this is not your pile, my loves. 
because the energy that is coming through, I am rolling away. The energy that is coming through is, it keeps happening. I just, I'm just sitting here and then my chair is like, whoop. Um, the energy that is coming through is extremely loving. It is extremely loving in a romantic sense. Um, it is very reassuring. It is very gentle. It is very sweet. It is very gorgeous. I am very excited to talk about it. Let's get into it. Um, what are we, what is happening? Okay. I couldn't remember the order of the cards that I did. I will say... With the High Priestess and the fact that I picked up on your intuition, but as I was talking about your intuition, Spirit was like, also them. It does feel as though there's a very, very, very strong intuitive connection uh, between you and your person. This is a person who you could be dreaming about currently. This is a person who music is coming up a lot. You are very, very, very avid listeners of music. I feel as though, honestly, there are very few hours in a day where you are not listening to music, if any. I feel like you listen to the music in the shower or you sing in the shower. I feel like a lot of you even listen to music while you're falling asleep. You listen to music while you're working. You listen to music while you're cooking. You listen to music while you're cleaning. You listen to music while you're walking, while you're driving, while you're traveling, while you're doing this, while you're doing that, while you're shopping, while you're doing everything. Um, music is, for most of you, I'm feeling, the strong majority of you, is as consistent in your life as breathing. Um... You have an extensive knowledge of music, an extensive connection with music. Music is a source of inspiration for you. Music is a source of connection with... Okay, this is interesting. Music is, for you, a way to decipher, acknowledge, and connect with your thoughts and feelings. As well as, a, a f you feel very creative, my babies. You feel very, very, very creative. And it does inspire you creatively, but it's also very internal. You know, when you hear a song that is particularly vulnerable, that is, you know, particularly emotional, it's like, oh my god, I understand better how I feel about this or a certain situation because of this song. Um, and so it provides a lot of clarity through, for you, through you. That was wild. Uh, we have Accelerated Motion, um, which is the Eight of Wands for this deck, which is manifestations happening, my babies. And I mean, shooting star, my loves, what you have wished for. And I feel as though a lot of you um, have been wishing for this person. New beginnings, gorgeous confirmation. Fool energy, take a leap of faith, my babies. And we have authority, which is uh, the emperor in this deck, which is beautiful. We also have um, balance, which is this deck's version of justice. Um, so, so that tells me that um, this person is nothing like either you have had before or nothing like you're afraid will come into your life. Um, it, because, you know, justice, it's all about balance, my babies, that is equal. You know, the scales are balanced. And it feels as though a lot of you, not just in your romantic relationships, but in a lot of your dynamics, the give and take is very often uneven. You feel as though you feel consistently obligated to give and to prove and to to seek you know to seek approval to seek validation to it's like you know i feel as though conflict makes you incredible con conflict and confrontation make you incredibly uncomfortable and so enough so that you'll actively work to prevent that in the form of you know, trying to put like band-aids on situations that haven't even occurred yet, 
you know, just to prevent the possibility of any kind of upset or any kind of confrontation in any form. Um, and so you, you back away or you, you know, you kind of roll over. I keep seeing like a dog, like, you know, when a dog is, is wanting to prove that like, it's not a threat, it'll roll over and expose its belly and be like, nope, look, my most vulnerable squishy parts. Look, they're here. I'm showing them to you. I wouldn't do that if I was a threat, right? Ah, and if <laughs> you're so sweet, you're so sweet. And it feels like, um, uh, okay. Uh, it feels like, you know, that's a lot of your, especially your adult life, but for, for the majority of you, like a lot of your lives in completion have felt very much like that. It's like, you know, I don't, you just, you're so, okay. We have wonders. It's like, you're so afraid of upsetting or hurting people that you'll almost always kind of like put yourselves in the line of fire, even if it's unnecessary or unwarranted. Even if somebody does something to you, you know, that, that they shouldn't, that they should apologize for, that they should have never fucking done in the first place, you feel like the type to to kind of take the blame for it. To sort of, you know, put put a band-aid over it just to just to smooth smooth out the sand and be like, no, I don't I don't want this to happen. Like you're so massively connected to the feelings of others that the thought of somebody being in any kind of distress or, or upset or any sort of, you know, negative emotional headspace is terrifying to you. Um, and so you accept a lot of behaviors that you shouldn't from other people, my babies, and you, um, you take on the responsibility for things that, you know, are not your responsibility just for the sake of that's nice. My loves, um, just for the sake of bottom of the deck is forgiveness, you know, kind of making a situation. Okay. Um, but that's not at all fair to you, my babies. Uh, we have wonders, illumination, wisdom, voyage, and stillness. Uh, with the swan here, my babies, this is, a, this is, I'm honestly, this is not just soulmates. This is divine counter sharp. Counter sharp, fuck off. <sighs> counter sharp. It's not that. It's not that thing I just said. It's divine counterpart. Oh my fucking goodness. <laughs> um, and so it feels like that, you know, is in part why you're being so called or have been called to, to, you know, set boundaries because it's like, you know, you deserve those boundaries, my love. Why, why do people have so much access to you? Do you know what I mean? Why do people have so much of an impact on, on the choices that you make, on the action you take, on, you know, how you live your life? People that, you know, shouldn't have any permission to fucking voice any kind of opinion on how you live your life, my darlings, because it's not their life to, to live. It's yours. And you never have to ask permission from somebody in regards to a situation in which you are the one who is going to be solely affected by that decision. Do you know what I mean, my loves? Um... Because the impact that you have on the world around you is massive. You are gorgeous. You are sensitive. You are heart-centered. You are loving. You create a ripple effect of positivity, my darlings. You create a ripple effect of kindness. Um, there, I'm seeing a lot of eyes on you. So you could be in, in the public eye or have some form of notoriety, some form of recognition. Um, you could have, you know, a rather large... Um, social media following um because there's a lot of attention on you <sighs> and I'm hearing spirits say that you know there are always unfortunately going to be people who don't perceive you in an accurate way 
But just because there are people who don't perceive you in an accurate way does not mean that the way that they perceive you holds any accuracy. Do you know what I mean, my loves? Like if people are perceiving you or what you do or what you say in, in a negative way, you do not feel as though the type of people that that would resonate accurately with. Do you know what I mean, my loves? You don't have a fucking mean bone in your bodies. You are so, so loving and so connected beyond empathetically. You are connected fully clairsentiently to the world and universe and people around you. Um, that, you know, if you make a little joke, a little funny, funny haha, and people blow it out of proportion, it's out of your hands. And it really reflects a lot more on them than it does on you, my darlings, because any genuine mistake that you make, you are ready and able to apologize for. Do you know what I mean? Um, and do so very, very, in a very heartfelt way. The things that you do that affect others negatively stay with you for fucking ever, my babies. You cannot get rid of that, despite how you very much should, because that's a very heavy burden to carry. Um, but you can't. You can't shake that. You can't shake the thought or fear that you have negatively impacted anybody. And I, I have to tell you, my loves, that the positive impact that you have on the people around you is so vast and so much more significant than any kind of slip up that anyone could make as a human being. Um, and I feel like it's so much harder for you to hold on to the knowledge that you do impact people very positively um, than it is for you to fear that you're having any kind of negative impact. Um, and we have wonders here. So I feel like you want really big things for yourselves, my loves. Like you want to achieve really great things. And you're going to achieve really great things. And I feel like... Sorry, Rowan, Rowan is snoring in the background. I feel like after that sort of chaos moment, after that tower shakeup where, you know, you, you feel tired, my loves. You do. You feel very tired. You feel very, very, very mentally exhausted. You feel very on your own. You feel not lost because, you know, with Wonders here, like, you see these dreams that you want to achieve. You know the direction that you're being called to take towards these dreams, but kind of lost in the way, maybe overwhelmed would be like the a more accurate word, like overwhelmed with like how to get from here to this dream. And it's like, what, what are the right steps to take? What if I, what if I slip? What if I make a mistake? What if I take the wrong step? And it's like my baby's you can't miss that because that only exists for you. That doesn't, that's not something that's just there that anybody can go towards. This specific thing is for you to get to. And no matter what path you take, no matter, you know, if you step on some unsteady ground and you slip a little bit and you have to take a different route, whatever way you go about it, you're going to get here because this is yours, my loves, and you're meant to have it and you will have it. And I mean that sincerely. And wholeheartedly, I would not say that if it was not what was meant for you and what was going to happen for you. Because it is. Pinky promise. And I take those very seriously, I'll have you know. Uh, <laughs> that is a soul-binding contract. Um, <laughs> and it feels like... feels like you're on your way to it, my loves. And some of you are aware of it and are consciously working towards it. And others of you are still in the beginning or planning phases of getting to that point. But either way, however that, that resonates for you, my loves, you're on your way to it and you know that it's supposed to be yours. Sometimes you can forget that you know that, but on a, on a deep soul level, whether consciously or unconsciously, you always know that that is for you, my loves. And so... It does feel as though there's so much love here, my loves. There, Yeah, okay, that's very... I didn't notice that, and then I just got a message and, and noticed it. It feels like this person is very strongly intuitive, I will say. You get a lot of messages uh, from them uh, in the form of songs. 
uh, especially songs that are stuck in your head. I feel like some of you could even be like hearing this person talk, especially in moments when you, I'm seeing you, especially in the last few months, for those of you that resonate with having gone through a lot of situations that have come up in the last few months, I see you needing to decompress a lot. Um, and you could be Taurus, you could be Gemini, you could be Virgo, you could be Capricorn, you could be Aquarius, you could be Aries. Um, you could be Pisces, excuse me, Stone for Grumbly, you could be Pisces, you could be Scorpio, um, because you need to decompress. Uh, and it feels like it happens at like the end of the day, quite late. Some of you, it happens when you can't sleep, like you'll get very restless and very like, fed up with the fact that you can't sleep so you're like fuck it let's get up let's you know let's go sit in the backyard let's go sit on the balcony and you need to like decompress and it feels like in those moments there was a point in time when those moments felt very lonely and I feel like although you might not even be aware of it my darlings in the last two months specifically those moments of Rowan is snoring so loud right now those moments of needing to decompress those moments of needing to to you know sort of let out what exists within you in a very strong way from from things that have occurred in the day or just a build up over time of things you've been through it feels like your person is very present in that moment they are very connected to your emotions my loves they are very connected to your thought process your feelings um the experiences that you go through and so when you're in in you know a state of need despite the fact that it's very difficult for you to voice those needs you don't have to with your person my loves because they are so intuitive that they pick up on it and it does feel as though there's a lot of healing and loving energy that they give you and i feel like in the grand scheme of things that's very telling um, because it does feel like if you kind of sat back and thought about it, you're like, oh, those moments where I've needed to decompress have felt lighter. It feels like you're sleeping better. Um, it feels like, you know, things that have kind of bogged you down, perhaps that you've overindulged in, you're aware of and, and either actively making improvements towards or wanting to make improvements towards, um, which is a very significant step, my darlings, you know, wanting to, wanting to, to make a positive change is a very significant step. Um, and it feels like, you know, part of that does relate to boundaries and does relate to some of you I'm hearing you working way too fucking much like way too much like non-fucking stop like not having time to exist in anything else other than work um and some of you are <laughs> sorry Rowan is snoring insanely some of you are finding a better balance um about that and that's very interesting because it all kind of fits very well. Because one, it's very important for you and for your health physically, emotionally, mentally. Um, but it's also like, it, it's really convenient because, you know, this person just really, like when the time is right, my babies, and I have to be honest, it feels like the time is right, like very fucking soon. The clarity with which this person is coming through, it feels very fucking soon. Um, a lot on the right side in my right ear, they stand, uh, they stand to the right of you a lot. And, um, yeah, deep seated soulmate connection. You two are really, really strongly pulling in towards each other. That's red string of fate vibes for sure. My loves, um, especially a lot of sacral energy as well, uh, connecting you both, which makes a lot of sense. This is a very passionate relationship. Um, I do feel as though you are people that very much enjoy um, intimacy and, and passion. Um, and in moments where you think about that or you entertain yourself in that regard. <laughs> I talk so normal. It's so cool that I do that. Um, when you entertain yourselves in that way. 
Um, it does feel as though there's a very strong, very present link to this person. I'm sorry, I have a massive mosquito bite on my arm. Um, and yeah, it's interesting that, you know, without realizing that this is why, you know, in part why you're doing it, it's also important for you to set the boundaries and be able to take care of yourself. This person loves you very deeply already, my loves. I don't feel as though you've met this person yet. I don't feel as though you know this person yet. I do feel as though, Jesus Christ, you will know this person very soon. Um, that's what the long nails are good for. Oof. That's nice. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. Um, it does feel as though you're going to know <laughs> very soon. Um, but you, you make this space for them. And then when you meet them, when you connect with them, they get to exist in this space that, you know, a couple months before you probably wouldn't have had for them. You wouldn't have had, you know, as much time to be able to, to build this connection that you very much want to build with this person. Um, and it's very fucking sweet. feels like boundaries are important in, in your workspace as well as in some, some relationships that you have as well. Um, for that reason as well. It's like, you know, because you love this person, my babies, you love this person so fucking much. And despite how this person's very protective of you, my darlings, and that is something that is so outside of the realm of familiarity to you that you can't really wrap your head around that. And so your knee jerk reaction is to be like, I don't need anybody to protect me. Um, that's all fine and good, my darlings. Nobody, nobody ever really needs someone to protect them. Um, but this, excuse you. No, I'm not taking all those, my loves. Thank you. Oh, fuck. Okay. Well, am I taking all of them? Fine. Um, it feels like, you know, yeah, you don't need somebody to protect you. But isn't it nice that somebody loves you enough that they want to? That they care enough about you to want to protect you and that they want you to be okay and be safe? Um, and in the same breath... It feels as though, I'm sorry for how loud that was, by the way. It, it feels like you are extremely protective of this. You're a very protective person, my love. The people that you love are very safe being loved by you. I'm sorry, I need to, I need to remove my arm from my body. <laughs> Apparently... I don't know if this is accurate, but apparently I have the blood type that mosquitoes like the best. They're apparently fussy little motherfuckers, and there are certain blood types that they don't like. Ow, my butt! Oh my god, it's because I was shit-talking the mosquitoes! Oh my fucking god, wow! Wow! What the fuck just happened? Okay, Jesus Christ! That was crazy. Whoa. Breathe through it. Oh my God. Fucking in through the nose, out through the mouth. M my gracious. Um, I have the universal blood type. I can't remember if that's O positive or O negative. I never remember. Um, it's the blood type where I'm supposed to donate a lot of blood, but I'm anemic, so I can't. <laughs> and I want to. They won't let me. <laughs> They're like, baby, you need that. And I'm like, well, are you sure? <laughs> all of it <laughs> um okay what the fuck was I saying now I'm just itchy everywhere now I'm freaking out um it does feel yeah you're very protective of this person and so despite the fact that so many people have access to you very openly when you connect with this person or right before because again even if you're not fully aware of it my loves the intuitive link between you is very strong and very clear um, and so you set boundaries that have a ripple effect. That was a cool thing I just did. Um, towards allowing boundaries to exist around not only you, but then you and this person. And that's very important to you because you're like, no, people can have access to me. That's all fine and good. 
they don't get to have access to the person that I love, you know? The person that I love didn't choose what I do for a living. They didn't choose the choices that I make. And so I'm going to protect them from, you know, the things that I experience. And then through that, alongside your person, you're like, oh wait, should people not have as much access to me? And they're like, I love you so much. You're so gorgeous. Let me kiss you on the face, baby. It's very sweet. Um, we have full moon in Pisces, forgive. New moon in Aquarius, open up to change. New moon in Virgo, trust all will be well. Yeah, my babies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. New moon in Leo, shine. Sunflowers are very big signs for this connection. And first quarter moon in Taurus, release control. You don't like that. You don't like that I just said that, my babies. You do not like that. You could be Taurus or you could be fixed sign energy, um, which is Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Leo which we have Scorpio, Taurus, Aquarius, <laughs> and Leo. Um, could be mutable as well. Uh, Pisces, Virgo, Gemini, and Sagittarius. Um, <laughs> so fucking itchy. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, okay. I don't have an arm anymore. If I don't, if I don't exist, then I can't be itchy. So my arm is not here. Um, which is unfortunate because this is my cute arm. <laughs> Just joking. They're both cute. I'm so tired. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> Speaking of, I need more tea. Okay. So, um, release control. Yeah. You hate that. You hate that. I said that you're like, girl, be quiet. Tell me more things. And that's okay. I get it. I love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you do have to though my babies you do have to and it feels like that pertains to this connection specifically because <sighs> it feels like in part you know okay there's so much coming through right now mm -mm 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 -mm. this is very destin this is very much fate in action, my babies. The two of you coming together is supposed to happen. And, <laughs> and it's going to happen. And it's going to be fantastic, my loves. But that being said... This is a person who loves you unconditionally. Okay, this is a person who loves you unconditionally and wants the best for you. Genuinely wants the best for you. And that's going to be somewhat shocking to you because this is one of the first people, perhaps some of you, the first person to come into your life who wants nothing from you other than you. And I don't think that can be said honestly and genuinely about a lot of the people you have in your life, my loves, because you're so generous, you're so loving, you are so doting, you're so wonderful, completely. And through that, there are going to be people who gravitate towards you because of all of the wonderful, beautiful, abundant things that they can get from you. And I gotta be honest, my loves, I gotta be honest. Some of those people do not deserve what it is that you give. But you'll still give it. You'll give it every time. You will give it every time. You will forgive anything every time because you have an innate understanding through your deep, clear, sentient understanding of humankind that people make mistakes. And you will always hope very deeply that any mistake that you make, although you have never intentionally made a mistake, my loves, you're human. But you hope above all hope that any mistake you have ever made, you will be forgiven for. And so you give out forgiveness in droves. Um, 
and it I just I just fucking adore you my babies it feels as though there are certain people who have done things that do not warrant forgiveness or if you must forgive them do not warrant a place in your life continuously past that forgiveness um and it feels like yeah the boundaries just keep coming up again and again my babies and so this is a person who comes into your life who sees you clearly truly and authentically in the state that you exist in in your most authentic way and yes that does pertain to vulnerability my loves yeah it does and that is just a natural thing you know <laughs> much like rowan snoring beyond comprehension it's a natural thing um and that's not something that's easy for you you know, despite how openly you give out love and affection, vulnerability is something that you have a very hard time with. Um, and it does feel like a lot of you are afraid of being seen in your truest and most authentic self beyond your own terms. It's like, no, I want to give you glimpses. I can give you glimpses because I've decided that it's okay to give those glimpses, but then you have this person, this beautiful, wonderful, loving person who has a fucking permalink from their heart to yours that has transpired over lifetimes again and again and again, and despite all odds, you have found each other in this lifetime because you have dropped into this lifetime with very little other than the knowledge that you are meant to find each other and have done so again and again and again and again and again and will do so in this lifetime and so you meet this person you fall in love with this person and all of those walls that you've built to structure against the vulnerability that you're so worried about exposing consciously you're like I don't want those there anymore I want you in that space with me where I can be vulnerable. And for some of you, that that's a fucking terrifying thought when you first have it, my loves. But just because it's scary, it doesn't mean that it's bad or wrong. Um, and the things within you that you're afraid of this person seeing, they love you through them. I'm hearing Spirit say very clearly, there are things that have occurred that you've experienced that you know somebody who is going to be with you for the rest of your life, who will love you for the rest of your life, is going to see at some point. And the fact that this person sees these things that you've experienced, that you've gone through, and loves you through them, is is meant to feel good for you, my loves. Do you know what I mean? It's not meant to be scary. It's meant to be reassuring. It's meant to be reassuring that the things that you ha you've experienced don't define you, that this person loves you truly unconditionally. And that's something I don't feel as though you've experienced before, my loves. True and authentic, unconditional love. Loving without condition. Um, a love that grows and shifts and evolves, but does not diminish or, or disappear. Um, is what this feels like. And it's like you can, it just feels like spirit is confirming again and again and again and again and again that you, you're safe with this person. Your vulnerabilities are safe with this person. The things that you haven't shared openly, despite how much sometimes you've wanted to, sometimes you've just wanted to be like, okay, just take it. Just take it out of me. Here you go. I don't fucking know what to do with this shit anymore. <laughs> And this person's like, okay. And you're like, what? And they're like, no, yeah, okay. I'll hold it for you. It, it, it's probably really heavy. It's probably been really difficult for you to hold this for this long. And they do that because they love you, my loves. But they also do it because they can handle it. Do you know what I mean, my darlings? Um, and one of the things that you fall in love with about this person initially is their strength. 
and they do have a lot of strength, but you have a lot of strength too, my loves. And it's a beautiful thing because so many aspects of what you notice in this person that are worth loving and that you do actively love, they reflect back to you. You know, the strength this person has, you have that as well, my darlings. You know, the, the passion this person has, you have as well. The drive this person has, you have as well. The ability to, to go for what they want and to achieve what they want, you have as well. The love that they have for the people around them, you have as well, my darlings. Um, and so through loving them, you get to give yourself back love that you very, very much deserve. This is a fantastic relationship, my loves. I have goosebumps all over. Um... Yeah. You're meant you're meant to be seen, my loves. You're meant to be seen by this person. This is also a relationship that you feel very very proud of. This is also a relationship I will say What am I pulling? Oh. Um you feel very very you like despite how protective you are of this person, especially for those of you that have or will have some level of fame, notoriety or are in the public eye in some capacity and you do want to protect this person from that cuz you're like no, they chose me. They didn't choose this life, but it's kind of like one and the same, my babies. Like what you do or will do is so important to you that the fact that this person chose you and loves you it kind of goes hand in hand. But despite the fact that you're so protective over them and you're protective over your privacy and your, your connection with this person, you're still so proud of them that you, you really do love showing them off. Like you love taking them out and like going to like a fancy, nice restaurant. And you know, you and this person walk in and you turn heads cause you're both fucking gorgeous. And you're like, yeah, look at my baby, but don't look too much. But, but it's like, it's like pride. It's like, pride for this person because it's like yeah look at this fucking gorgeous person that I have on my arm like don't you wish you were me but they're mine get away and, <laughs> and it's cute it's very cute like people I feel as though you know the people close to you your friends your family the people that love you very genuinely love this connection that you're in and they love that you found this person and I mean there is no denying the fact that you and this person fit together so well and it just you're so proud like it's like you know like you got your chest puffed out a little bit you're like yeah I did good I don't know how the fuck they found me and I'm fucking lucky as hell but like I did good and they feel the exact same my loves it's like I have no idea how I got lucky enough to find you but like good for me <laughs> Um, oh, we have a lot of cards here. Yeah, there's a lot to say. You could have, um, a lot of mercury energy. A lot of chatty energy. Uh, we have the world. We have the queen of pentacles. Yeah. Yeah, the eight of swords. I was looking at, uh, trust all will be well. The Virgo here. The overthinking. Oh, babies. We have the queen of pentacles and we, excuse you. And we have the queen of wands. We have the ten of wands. We have the fool leap of faith my babies leap of faith um bu, 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 bu. we have the five of pentacles we have the three of pentacles oh, okay we have the king of pentacles oh my goodness oh my goodness okay everybody's scooching 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 uh whew. We have the four of wands. Okay, yeah, that's soulmates. Soulmates, soulmates. Divine, divine partnership. Um, you could be seeing 11, 11 a lot. Um, the 11th as well. The 11th feels very significant to this connection. You could start speaking on the 11th or connect with them on the 11th. Find out about them on the 11th. Um, okay, so we have the world here. This is divinely led, my babies. This is very much divinely led. This is very much like how it feels like when it comes to your dreams and what you want to do for a living and what you will achieve. It's like with this connection as well, there's nowhere you could have gone. There's no path you could have taken that would not lead you to where you're meant to be going, my babies. Because you're meant to have it. What you're meant to have is already yours. Very much so, my babies. This is a very abundant connection. The two of you, I do see eventually when your relationship is established, 
Okay. You both feel very creative. You feel very creative. It feels like you build the success that you have. But you especially, I'm seeing you go particularly far with your creativity. And it does feel as though some of you, those of you who are writers or artists, whatever you do, there's been some sort of block that you've been experiencing lately. Um, and it's incredibly fucking frustrating. Like, very fucking frustrating. But you connect with this person even just before within two weeks of meeting this person, I feel like you get like a spurt of creativity that you haven't had in a while. But when you're with this person, there's something about the way that you two are so fucking compatible. You're best friends. You are best friends alongside the fact that you, you are in a relationship or that you love each other fucking unconditionally. Like this is beautiful. This is a relationship that people honestly can't even fucking fantasize about because it's so perfect that it's like a logical mind wouldn't even be able to like flesh out all of the the depth to the connection that you have. You love each other so much. Oh my god, I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. Um, but this person has such an innate understanding of you and the way that your mind works. And I feel like that message specifically, hi baby, is coming out because there are a lot of people that don't get you fully. You desperately want someone to get you. You're like, I don't think I'm that difficult to understand. I don't think I'm that complicated. But people are like, I'm just not getting it. Like your sense of... <laughs> Your sense of humor, the way you communicate, the ideas that you have, the passions you have, the drive that you have. People are like, I like your funny words, magic man. And it's like, you're like, no, I'm just, I'm just like explaining something I think in a very cohesive way. And they're like, oh, you. And you're like, hello. And then you meet this person and you two, it's like you speak your own fucking language. Like you two are so... You're so similar, but so different. So different, but so compatible. And that compatibility comes from your similarities. Like the way that you speak is very similar, I feel. I feel as though both of you do not have a fucking filter. I feel like because I said no fucking filter, despite the fact that I swear a lot, both of you swear a lot. Um, I feel like you both talk very quickly. There's a lot of mercurial energy here. Um, I feel like your senses of humor are the same. Um, and it does feel as though there, there's a bit of, like, dryness or, like, very, very, very deep-seated sarcasm to the sense of humor you have. But also sometimes you guys are just goofy. There's a lot of, like, meme references. There's Vine references. There's a lot of, like, just silly little ha-has. Um, <laughs> little play on words, teehees. And, you know, sometimes people, like, don't get it and you're like isn't it just fun to be funny sometimes right don't you just don't you just like to have a little a little hee hee ha ha and people are like but what does it mean and you're like sometimes it's just okay to be funny <laughs> and then you meet this person who just gets you this person just understands the way that your mind works my loves and that's not surprising considering there is such a depth to the familiarity that you have with each other because you've known each other so many lifetimes over that of course this person understands you, you know, because you two have known each other for so much fucking longer than is understandable in this physical lifetime on a logical basis. And that's amazing. And so because they understand you so well, they're able to understand... It's almost like they understand you in a way that sometimes you can't even understand you. Do you know what I mean, my loves? Like, say you're at, you know, say you're a writer and you're experiencing writer's block. This person is such a grounding presence for you, my loves. It is beautiful. The safety that you have with this person, um, they could really like, um, like if they have longer nails, they could really like, um, like kind of lightly like scratching your back like very soothingly because I keep feeling like this in like the middle of my back like they're just very or like even just with their palm um they're just very soothing um very comforting and very grounding for you the nape of the neck as well they could like move like their 
like either okay either they drag their nails like up and down the nape of your neck and along your scalp or they're very good with like pressure points and so they can like soothe the pressure point at the back of your neck if there's a pressure point is that the one where you can knock somebody out with there's one where if you push on it anyway i don't they, they're not doing that it <laughs> It's nice. It's gentle. It's loving. I'm just, I just, I'm, I'm on a tangent now. Um, I had a friend once who knocked out another friend cause they were, they were like, ha ha as a joke, here's a karate chop. And then they hit somewhere on, on the other person and they just fucking leveled. It was very scary. Actually, <laughs> it was crazy. Um, <laughs> they were fine. They were very angry when they, when they came to, but they were fine. Um, <laughs> And so, you know, they're, they're soothing you and they're like, what's wrong? What's, cause it feels like you can get very frustrated and very aggravated. Um, and this person's very grounding for you, not in a condescending way. I feel like people can be very condescending about the way that you react to things. It's like, if you get upset, if you get angry, people are like, oh, shh, baby love, my little baby, my little baby cake, my little, my little baby bunny wearing a top hat. <laughs> What's got you in a tizzy, my little baby love? And it's like, sometimes people can be pissed off about things. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes people can just be aggravated because the shit that they're trying to do isn't working out. Um, and so despite how grounding and comforting this person is, they're not condescending. They're not belittling to the way that you feel. It's very liberating for you, actually, my loves. Um, and they're like, what's going on? And you're like, I'm trying to get through this fuck. I keep hearing scene. I'm trying to get through this scene. So you could be, you could write like novels. You could write short stories. You could write uh, screenplays. I'm hearing, what is on my arm? Aside from the mosquito bite. Um, oh, that's weird. Okay. Um, what could be going on back here? You'll never know. Mm. Um... <laughs> And you're like, I'm trying to get through this scene and it's just not working. And they're like, well, why isn't it working? And you're like, I don't know. And they're like, well, what do you want to happen? And you're like, I don't know. So they read through the scene and they're like, well, it looks like you're trying to like have them do this. And you're like, yeah. And they're like, well, what if they did this? And it just clicks. Like they just understand you so well that they're able to help you work through what it is that you're trying to get through. For those of you that are artists, it's like, you know, it's just not working and, and you know, I don't know why. And they're like, oh, well maybe if, you know, you kind of change the coloring here and then you're like, oh my God. And then it just inspires you to finish the whole fucking piece of art in 10 minutes. And like, they just, they get you, my babies, not even on an intuitive level, very much that as well. But on a soul level, like they understand you and you do the same for them as well. My loves, like you're very grounding for them, very healing for them. It does feel as though you are the first person who has ever made this person feel safe. And for some of you that could be reciprocated on your end as well, where you've never before felt safe, let alone in a romantic relationship, but with another person, the way that you do with this person. Um, but it does feel, it feels like for them, especially, no, for both of you. Yeah, you're very similar in that regard where it's like, okay, you know, you give out a lot, but you give out so much that it almost distracts from the fact that you're not letting people in fully. And then you two come together <laughs> and you two, you know, all of a sudden the, the these walls, this door that you've kept locked and key closed off, you know, to prevent other people from getting in, you meet each other and you both throw these doors open. And it's like, oh, you're supposed to be here. You live here. I was waiting for you. That's why I didn't want anybody else in here kind of a thing. Do you know what I mean, my loves? Um, and it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. This person, I will say, knocks your fucking mismatched socks off. Um they make you feel a lot of things but they they're gorgeous to you they are gorgeous in a way that goes beyond physical appearance yes very much they're physically attractive you're very physically attracted to them but there is something that is undeniable about the pull that you feel to this person it's like it's not even a matter of, I want to get to know you. It's a matter of, 
I don't know what it is, but I know I need to be a part of your life. And that's ooh, my babies. Um, also, I keep having my eye drawn to this cake and I can't remember because I've been talking for quite a while. Um, and I also don't remember many things I say when I channel, but it, I think it was this reading. I talked about the 11th being a date. Um, it does feel as though the 11th could be the date of your birthday or their birthday or and slash and um, with cake that always makes me think of booty. Um, so somebody in this connection could have a great booty. Um, I do feel as though somebody in this connection could be you. My loves is an ass person, especially if, if you're the Taurus, we got a lot of Taurus coming up. So you could be a Taurus or have a Taurus in your prevalent signs in your chart. I've never met a Taurus that couldn't appreciate a great ass. I gotta be honest, my babies. Um, I have a um, one of my best friends, lifelong best friends. She's magnificent. She's a Taurus. Physically cannot walk past me without spanking my butt. Cannot. And I'm always like, love you so much. Your husband's standing right there. Also, you're three months pregnant. What is, what's all that? And she's like, I just, you just have a great ass. And I'm like, okay, first of all, you're a Taurus. So you, you, when you compliment me, I know it's sincere and it means a lot. Second of all, thank you. <laughs> Never met a Taurus that can't appreciate a great butt, my babies. Um, mm, I do feel as well. Okay. Three of pentacles. So there, it feels like most of your social connections Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. This is a twofer. Most of your social connections are with people who either do what you do or similar to, or most of your social connections are through your work or at least where you're more social. Um, because it does feel as though there's some sort of link with your circle, a person that you know that connects you to this person. Um, and that's the kind of bridge that gaps the two of you, because it's like, without this one factor, without this one person, I have no fucking idea how we feasibly would have met. I just know that we're supposed to meet. Um, and so for a lot of you, it does feel as though it's a person that you work with or, um, a close friend that you have that does either what you do for work as well, or works with you as which is the first thing that I said. Anyway, so we're going to pull. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, uh, the quantum quantum Oracle. Um, what is the two of swords about? First of all, before let, hang on. I want to pull, just want to clarify what the two of what decision are you? Both. Okay. Thank you. Um, page of coins. Excuse you. Um, page of, we have the 10 of wands twice. You, oh, babies. And we have the tower. There she is, my love. There she is. Okay. So you have the 10 of wands twice. So you're fucking exhausted. You're exhausted in a way that feels beyond the realms of understanding. Do you know what I mean, my loves? It's like exhausted in a way that doesn't make sense. It's like you could sleep for 10 straight hours and then you wake up and you're like, I could go right back to bed. Um, you could have a day off from work and then go to bed, wake up the next day and be like, God, I could use a day off. And like, It's a bone deep kind of tired and it feels as though it's a tiredness that is directly in relation to the boundaries that you're being called to set. And it feels like once those boundaries are set, once they are upheld, because it does feel like you'll have moments, my darlings, and it feels like this is a reoccurring theme in your life. You'll have moments where you'll set boundaries and you won't uphold them. You know, you'll kind of fold on them and you'll be like, oh, I didn't mean it. Um, because somebody's like, oh, I don't, I don't like that you did that. And you're like, oh shit, I'm so sorry. I'd take it back. And it's like, baby, my baby, you hate when people tell you what to do, but I got to say, my loves, you got to uphold those boundaries. My babies, you got to uphold those boundaries. Um, 
Okay, page of coins, ten of wands. Okay, well, that's really fucking obvious. Why didn't I get that before? So the choice that you have to make is, yeah, are you setting the boundaries and welcoming this person into your life? Or are you not setting the boundaries and then kind of prolonging um, this person coming into your life? Because it feels like they're really ready for you, my babies. I have to say, it does feel like they're really fucking ready for you i mean we have the queen of wands and we have the queen of pentacles so like yes this has been a long fight with the fucking two uh the spouses of of the pentacles this has been a long time coming like this has taken a while to build you two are very well established in your lives as it stands like you are either well on your way to starting the careers that you want to have you're well into the careers that you want to have financial stability etc 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 um place that you want to live so on what have you it does feel like you are like like you've built some stuff you've built the stable stable foundation to to have this connection you know grow up grow upon and it's like now you're in the queen of wands energy where it's like okay let's take action and she's ready my babies Regar again regardless of gender it never has anything to do with gender this is feminine energy but it does feel like this is your person and that queen of wands is ready it's like let's go show me kind of a thing and then are you gonna are you gonna show them are you gonna be like yeah i'm gonna set boundaries i'm going to prioritize myself in the way that you prioritize me i'm going to care for myself in the way that you care for me and i'm going to welcome this relationship in because this relationship is fucking fantastic my babies it's amazing and you know it feels like part of why you know you have such a hard time setting boundaries is it's like ooh, um but it feels like, you know, part of the reason you're afraid of setting boundaries is it's like when it comes to setting boundaries, more often than than not, there are things that get cut off. And you're so fearful of loss that it's like, I don't want to cut those things off. Even if they're things that aren't meant to be there, I just don't want to lose them. And it's like... It's difficult because it's like, if it gets cut away when you set those boundaries, my loves, it's because it wasn't meant to be there. And you're like, I know, but I still don't want to lose it. And, you know, it's very hard to make room for what you're meant to have when you're hanging on to what is no longer serving you. Do you know what I mean, my loves? Um... But I also will say you aren't losing as much as you're worried that you're going to lose, my babies. You're just losing what you're not meant to carry anymore. Um, and don't even think about it as losing. Think about it as, you know, being freed from, quite literally. Um, because that's what it feels like. You're, like you're, no, you're no longer being weighed down by it, you know, my love. I was like, look, she's fucking struggling, my baby. She doesn't need to do that anymore. Um, we have deception... Uh, Angels of the Four Directions and the Vast Universe. Okay, hang on. Oh, we have Intuition and Manifestation. Yeah, there's some power in this connection, my babies. are like, what is happening? Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, okay. There's... Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, I'm sorry, little Rose. Um, we have the Honoring Path. This is how you see this person with the queen of wands, with the honoring path and with the Leo energy somewhere where it was like shine, baby. We have increase. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm fucking everything up. Uh, family, friends and guides transformation, uh, increase. I want one more, please. One more, please. But yeah, you see this person as this like shining, glimmering, beautiful, amazing, fantastic angel of a person. Thank you, my loves. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Courage. Courage. You. I mean, we talked about it at the beginning of the reading, my love, several hours ago. Where it's, I don't know how long it's been. It's probably been a long time. Um, where you have that warrior energy. There's nothing that you can't overcome and get through and achieve. Um, and it feels like this person really helps remind you of that, that, you know, 
you are capable of making these changes in your life that are only going to benefit you. And of course, change is, you know, frightening because it's different, it's unfamiliar, and we're not used to it. So we feel slightly uncomfortable going towards it. And, you know, if there are things that make us uncomfortable, and sometimes when we have the choice to revert that decision, we go back and we're like, no, I'll just go back to what I know. Even if it's not what I want, even if it's not what I know I'm supposed to have, even if it's not what would benefit me, it's what I know. So I'll stay here. And it's like, you don't have to do that, my babies. You have the courage to go forward, to go towards all of this wonderful, beautiful stuff. Um, with deception, I feel like... Oh, my hands smell really good. What's happening there? Oh, oh, oh. Um, I don't know what I did to them, but they smell lovely. Uh, oh, I was playing with my hair a lot. That's why. Um, <laughs> mm. Deception. Who's deceiving you? Something doesn't feel like direct deception. If, oh, okay, we're getting two messages here. So on the one hand, um, this is, this is easy for me to say more difficult to, to take on, but there are going to be people who are going to talk shit, my loves, and you just got to turn away from it. You know, my loves, you can't take it to heart because the people that are talking shit about you are people that don't know the authentic version of you that only those who are worthy of knowing are going to know. Do you know what I mean, my loves? Um, so if there are people who are talking shit, if there are people who are envious, if there are people who are trying to bring you down, they don't let them exist in your space. But also, I will say... Okay, this person... I can't say it enough, loves the shit out of you. Um, in the same breath, you are a person who, and this is something they value and respect about you, my loves, also something they share with you. You're like, I don't like being told what to do or how to do something. And this person will not do that, my loves. That is not the type of person they are. They are not the type of person to tell somebody what to do. Not even really the type of person to tell someone how to do it unless someone overtly asks. And even then it's like, well, you could do it this way. You don't have to though. Um, oh, I got scared. I thought there was a fruit fly in my tea, but it was just a fruit piece. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, that being said, that being said, this person is extremely intuitive, extremely intuitive, loves you very much, very protective. Um, and so They always have your best interest at heart, my loves, but there are going to be instances where there are going to be people in your lives already or people who are going to come into your lives, especially because it feels like a lot of you are already or will be working with people who have some form of public recognition. You know, you're working with people, you're working with creators, musicians, actors, filmmakers, artists, photographers, etc., 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 um, and sometimes those people can be fucking shady as hell, my loves. Not all of them. Some of them are fucking fantastic. But sometimes, you know, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, my loves. And that's not always the easiest thing for you to see. Because despite how you don't innately and freely give out trust, you are a very kind-hearted person. And more often than not, we interpret people's behaviors and actions as a reflection of our own. And because you're so good and generous and loving and kind and sweet, sometimes you can be like, that's how this person is. And then you have this person who loves you, who is extremely fucking intuitive, my loves. They could work as intuitives. This woman reminds me of a fun little, little witch n n person. <laughs> and we're getting a lot of confirmation that this person's tapped in as fuck. Um, and so they could you know, it's not easy for them, but I feel like they love you so much that they're like, is it, you know, can I tell you something? And you're like, yes. And they're like, I just don't have the best feeling about so-and-so's intentions. 
Um, and so sometimes, you know, that can cause you to be a little defensive because it's like, well, what do you want me to do? I'm working with them or, you know, don't worry about it kind of a thing. And it's like this person will always act much like you, my loves. They will always act from a place of love. You two love each other more than either of you have ever loved a single fucking thing in this entire universe in this lifetime, my darlings. And lifetimes past, their heart is always in the right place, my darling. So they're not trying, you know, they're not anybody you've experienced before. You have had experiences with people who have tried very much to control you and to force you, you know, to navigate a certain path despite the fact that it wasn't what you wanted. And, you know, people who you know, compromised your, your safety and your will and your happiness for their own benefit. This is not that person, my loves. This is a person who only ever wants the best for you. So again, your choices are your own, but if this person comes up to you and says, I don't feel like blah, 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 you know, is the, the way they're portraying themselves. It doesn't mean that you're like, you know, dropping everything and you're like no I quit I'm gone but it's just like just be mindful about this person now because you have a warning from your own personal psychic that loves you unconditionally um which is pretty fucking cool um but it does feel like yeah with transformation here I do feel as though you're through the worst of it I do feel that very strongly my loves I feel like that's a reassurance that you need because you're like I have never been more fucking exhausted in my life um you are through the worst of it my loves you just Trust yourself and the way that you feel. And if you're called to do something, my darlings, even if it's something that you're like, this isn't going to be the easiest thing to do, if it feels right, because you are people who always follow your hearts, my loves, your hearts have never led you astray. If it feels right, it's what you're meant to act on. And then down the bridge you go, my babies, there's your person. There's what you want to do for a living. Your dreams come true. Beautiful. But it does feel like it's happening very quickly, honestly. I feel like for the, for the majority of you within the next three months, much sooner for a lot of you, maximum six months for most of you outside of the three month range. Some of you, two to three weeks. Um, is there anything else? They're like, no, babe, please stop talking. That's valid. Um, <laughs> group number three, my beautiful darlings. That's an incredible connection. That is really, 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 really beautiful. This person's a fantastic kisser. I'm also hearing you tell me, which is very lovely. Congratulations. <laughs> but I hope that, fuck. I hope that you enjoyed that, my babies. If you did, please feel free to leave a comment. Let me know. Love hearing from you. Love talking to you. Uh, if the reading resonated, my energy resonated. Some of you could be getting sick. Um, or throat, oh. throat chakra energy. Um, need to speak up more. My babies need to speak uh, your authentic truth more. Um, if the reading resonated, my energy resonated, please consider subscribing my loves. All of my links for Patreon with the 18 plus extended readings, the exclusive readings, monthly forecasts, what have you, so on. My uh, Instagram, my Etsy store, and my email for more information on private readings, as well as... No, that's it. I love you. <laughs> are down below in the description box. Thank you so much for... Being here with me, my loves. Um, I'm very grateful to you. Very excited for you. This is a really, really, really beautiful connection. Um, everything you, you've wanted, but better than you've asked for. I promise you that, my loves. Um, and I really appreciate you being here with me and allowing me to convey those messages to you, my darlings. I love you very, very much. Bye. I just realized... I kept, um, in all the piles, I was like, are these all the decks that I chose? Like, I thought there was more. And I just noticed that, uh, the intimate oracle that I had, I had taken out to use in these readings, I haven't used in any, <laughs> wasn't meant to be, um, that poor intimate oracle. I never use it as much as I want to. Um, I do love her though. I also made the mistake of looking at the time, which I should never do. I should know better than to do that uh, in a reading, but I did it. Ooh, yikes. Um, <laughs>
got a little too real for me there. Um, group number four, my beautiful loves. Last but certainly not least, my babies. If you picked this, the Guardians of the Land Protection. Uh, this is your reading on your next important connection what connection is coming towards you we have raven spirit truth okay so this feels yeah we have the eight of coins eight of pentacles you have the, okay yeah i was like that what's happening um we have the ace of wands you're very psychic you're very psychic you could identify as witches at the very least you are very tapped into receiving signs from the universe my loves especially animal signs um ravens crows doves uh deer and foxes i'm hearing as being very important signs some of you frogs as well um also feathers are very important signs for you my darlings it does feel like the next person that you are connecting with i feel like it's i feel like it's a spirit guide that's really fucking cool. I was not expecting that. I was like a friend, someone you work with. It feels like a spirit guide, my darling. Some of you could already be in communication with them or receiving signs actively from them. These cards are so fucking cool. Um, but it feels like there's something that you want to start. Some of you, a new job. Or some of you um, could want to start working like a... Oh like a side hustle um, with something that you're very passionate about, something very creative. And it's like, oh, that was a wild way for that to come out. Um, choose wisely, transformation, new beginnings in authority. Yeah, I fucking absolutely. Um, so it feels like um, you're very creative. You have a very, um, very creative passion that you like to do. Some of you are, some of you are artists, you're creators. You, you do something with your hands. You know, some of you could even be like Reiki healers or massage therapists, but it feels like the majority of you create with your hands. Um, and it feels like it's something that, you know, you get a lot of fulfillment from you, you, feel very centered and and very much like that hobby whatever it is whatever you're creating is just it's like that's where I'm supposed to be that's what I'm supposed to be doing and it feels like you know it's something you want to do for work but you're like you know I have bills to pay like that's just not realistic so it's like you're being very called to kind of start small and be like, we'll do it on the side and build that up gradually. And it feels like, you know, this, because this is such a hugely new phase. Yeah. Change. You want different things for yourselves. My babies, you don't, I, it feels like the last thing you want is to go through another like cycle, another year cycle where it's like, I'm doing the same thing. I'm at the same job. I'm living in the same place. Like I want something new. I want something more. I know I'm supposed to have something more leadership. This is uh, the emperor for this deck and leadership as well, my darlings, is emperor energy. So it's like, yeah, I want more. I want to take action. Um, focus. New beginnings again, my babies. Yeah, you're meant to have something new, my loves. Love. Oh, that's very cute. And miracles. Oh, yeah, you're very fucking tapped in, my darlings. Um, and bottom of the deck is simplicity, which is a white feather. Confirmations for you, my loves. Um, but it feels like because, you know, this is such a new phase of life for you, because this is such a significant shift, there is a spirit guide coming forward who either you have never communicated with before or a spirit guide that's been around, but just hasn't been at the forefront because, you know, they really, they feel like they're meant to guide you on this specific path in your life, my loves, and, and to guide you through, you know, what you're meant to create. And it feels like what you're meant to create is important for different reasons. Either it's important for, you know, the audience you're creating it for, or it's just important for you to find that happiness and fulfillment that you're meant to have, my loves, that you, you really aren't finding in other avenues of your life, my loves. And you're like, no, this is what I want. This is what... I know I'm supposed to be doing. Um, full moon in Cancer, let your fears dissolve. Yeah. 
So there, I mean, there is so much energy here. And I feel like you're receiving it as well, my loves. It feels like you're aware of it. So much energy that's like, yes, no, go for it. Like, yes, no, you're supposed to do this. Like, don't worry about it. It's gonna go well. And it feels like, I mean, confirmation after confirmation, my babies, it's gonna go well. Um... First quarter moon in Pisces, honor your feelings. Ooh, ooh, my cards are stuck. Oh no. Uh, first quarter moon in Aries, step into your power. Absolutely. Again with the Emperor energy. Uh, new moon in Pisces, attuned to the divine. And new moon in Gemini, think it through. Yeah, okay. So it does feel, feels like your planners, my love. It feels like, you know, it's very hard for you to take a step forward without having like a clearly outlined kind of map for what you're supposed to do and it feels like the reason that you know this guide is coming through is yeah transformation energy here my babies it's like out with out with the old you know we gotta we gotta close one door because we we want to go through the other one that we're waiting to open kind of a thing and um it's a matter of like you know, you're meant to be leaning on on this guide on this on this guide that's coming through as opposed to having like a clear outline for what you're meant to be doing um we have the seven of cups we have the king of cups absolutely absolutely you're seeing things clearly my loves and and you know you're meant to trust your intuition at this time my darlings primarily yeah exactly the psychic insights and, uh, you know, if it causes fear or anxiety, it's not a, it's not an intuitive insight. My loves Knight of pentacles, um, justice and the four of pentacles. Okay. Yeah. So you're worried about money. It feels very strongly, my loves. Um, you're worried about money, but it feels like money is fine. Like you're not, you're not losing any money. You know, yes, you kind of, you know, for those of you that want to like start doing this as a business, start selling it, like you're going to have to spend a bit of money for supplies, for things that you need, but it's like, it's worth it. You know, it's a worthy investment. It makes you happy. You're going to feel so fulfilled. The money is going to come back to you. I'm hearing that very strongly. And you know, you're still doing like your, your day job or whatever it is that you do regularly. So the money isn't going anywhere, but you get you get to feel fulfilled and happy and honestly my darlings i feel like if you believe in yourself and and do this with the intention of succeeding at it it's gonna go really well you're gonna you know get off the ground with it in a very positive way my loves you just can't let the fear and the worry bog you down so much because i mean it does feel like you really have like a fantastic knack uh, for manifesting. Yeah, you're meant, you're meant to succeed at that, at this very strongly, my loves. Um, and it feels like, you know, a confirmation for that is the fact that you have, this is beautiful, the fact that you have such strong spiritual support behind you, my loves, and it, and it feels like, you know, yeah, my loves, like you're tapped in, babies. It feels like you don't need to, you know, kind of resist or control this so much. It's just like, just trust your heart. It feels like you can do that so naturally and so easily in, you know, every other aspect of your life. You can, you know, trust the signs that you receive from spirit and you can trust the synchronicities and you can follow your heart and follow where they're guiding you. But when it comes to this, when it comes to going for something that you really, really, really want, it's difficult. It's like, well, no, I'm scared. And it's like, what are you scared of? And it feels like you don't have an answer to that. Do you know what I mean, my loves? It's like, I don't know what I'm scared of. I'm just, I'm just scared. And it's like, well, don't be like, this is a good thing. You don't need to be scared of going after what you want. Like, this is a really positive thing that you're meant to be having. And it feels like this guide is so affectionate and so loving and really very much is taking your hand and guiding you towards where you're meant to go, my loves. You just have to believe that you're supposed to be there, you know, because it feels like, it feels like this, this 
thing that you create, whatever it is, it's very healing for you as well. The process of creation is incredibly healing for you. Some of you I'm hearing it could be in relation to your mother or a maternal figure. Like there's some sort of connection through that. It could, you know, if it's like knitting or crochet, it could be that you learned it from, you know, a maternal figure, but there's some sort of like very healing connection through what you do and it feels like that sort of that affection and that connection really resonates with the people that are drawn to what you create like it just makes them feel a lot of really deep emotional connection to important people in their lives or to you know an important time or to to something that that means a lot something very heart-centered to people and you're meant to do that for people you're meant to to bridge that connection between people and their, you know, their deeper emotions in a way that sometimes people can resist, my loves. And that's a beautiful thing. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, I do feel honestly, though, like, it's gonna go really well for you. Like, genuinely. Like, I feel like it's gonna really take off. And I do feel as though, I feel like within... Four years this is something that you end up doing like permanently like you're allowed and that's a very like exciting point in time to be able to like quit your job and know confidently that you get to do something that makes you feel fulfilled and happy every day and get to live off of the income that you earn from doing that like that's wonderful um I also feel like you've been getting a lot of dreams that have really been urging you to do this. And I feel like the dreams like are not stopping, but then once you're like, okay, I'm doing it, they just stop right away. And that's your confirmation as well. My darlings, is there anything else? My loves? Oh, they give me a shiver. Oh my God. Shiver. And they tell me, no, that was very to the point. My loves. That was also very cool. I wasn't expecting that to come through, but I did say at the beginning of the reading and the introduction that the readings today would all be very, very, very individual. And that is extremely individual, my darling. Some of you, um, it could be that, okay, that's why I was like, mm, the shiver isn't, isn't, isn't as shivery as I'm feeling it should be. Um, some of you, this guide could be this maternal energy that, you know, your, what you create, uh, connects you through as well. And, uh, I feel like some of you might not even know that, but then it's like clicking and you're like, oh my God. Um, yeah. And I'm getting like a, a kiss on the top left of my head. If that resonates with you, my darlings. Okay. Now, is there anything else? Woo. That was a shiver that shivered. Um, group number four, my sweet, beautiful darlings. I hope that you enjoyed that, my loves. That's a very... Very, very, very cute message to come through. Very sweet, very surprising, but in a very positive way. And uh, it feels like what you what you do is very cool. And I really, really hope that you pursue it, my darlings, because it just feels like it's it's really what you're meant to be doing, my loves. Really good things coming from it. And you're meant to be your own boss as well. I'm hearing you're you're tired of working under people. You want to make your own hours. You want to have more freedom in that way, my loves. It's a really lovely way to be. But I hope that you enjoyed that, my babies. If you did, please feel free to uh, leave a comment and let me know. Um, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to talk to you. If the reading resonated, my energy resonated, please consider subscribing. All of my links for Patreon with the extended readings, 18 plus readings, um, exclusive readings, monthly forecasts, my Instagram, my Etsy store, my email for more information on private readings are down below in the description box. Thank you so much for oh, being here with me. I'm very excited for you and I love you very, 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 very much. Bye.